This message contending for the faith by Brother William Marion Branham was delivered in February 1956 at the Georgetown High School in Georgetown, Indiana, USA. Hier die boodskap streef vir die geloof dier bro William Marion Branham oorspronkig gelever in Engels in februari 1956 by die Georgetown Hoerskool in Georgetown, Indiana, VSA. Be a prayer in the United States. Amen. Brother Brandon. Thank you, Brother Brian. Good evening, friends. That was quite an introduction, wasn't it? The President of the United States. <clears throat> We're happy to be here tonight in this auditorium here in Georgetown, Indiana. Thank you, Bro Agen Bright. Good evening, friends. This was not a bekend stelling, nie waar nie, the President of the United States. Ons is blij om hier te wees vanavond in hierdie auditorium hier in Georgetown, Indiana. As I was coming down the road a few moments ago, it kind of brought something to my memory. One of my first healing services I ever had was in Georgetown, Indiana. Terwijl ek in die pad afgekom het, een paar oomblikke gelede, het dit my soort van aan iets herinner. Een van my eerste geneesingsdienste wat ek ooit gehad het, was in Georgetown, Indiana. And how many remembers the Wolf Grove's meeting out here when it's out to Wolf Grove. That's somebody's hand up back there. Two or three of them when we're out to Wolf Grove. En hoeveel onthou die Wolf Grove dienste hier buiten, toe ek buiten by Wolf Grove was? Daar is iemand sy hand op daar achter twee of drie van hulle, toe ons buiten by Wolf Grove was. I believe they had a little lady who lived up there in New Albany, had been 35 years a cripple, walked for her first time. Or was a midget, I believe it was, and never had walked. Well, I still got the same message tonight, Jesus died to save and heal. And I haven't changed it any. Hulle het blijkbaar a damekie gehad, wat daar boe in New Albany gewoon het, wat 35 jaar krepel was, wat vir die eerste keer geloop het, of een dwerg was, blijkbaar, en nog nooit geloop het nie. Wel ek het nog steeds die selde boodskap van aan, Jesus het gesterf om te red en te genees, en ek het dit geensens verander nie. Sinds dan, er zijn veel dingen die gebeurd zijn, ik heb een miljoen souls gebracht door Jesus Christ, en signs en wonders, Around the world, kings and monarchs, potentates have been prayed for and healed by the grace of our God, and we're very happy tonight to know that God is still God, and He doesn't change. Sederdien was daar baie dinge wat gebeur het, ek het meer as een miljoen siele gesien, wat na Jesus Christus gebring is in tekens en wonders om die wereld. Konings en voorste en heersers is voor gebid en is genees, dier die genade van onze God, en ons is baie blij vanavond om te weet, dat God steeds God is, en Hy verander nie. I'm happy tonight to see my friend Dr. Cobbles, I don't know if anyone's introduced him or not, from Church of the Open Door in Louisville. Have you been introduced by the Cobbles? Ek is blij vanavond om my vriend Dr. Cobble daar te sien, ek weet nie of enig iemand hom bekendgestel het, of nie, van die kerk van die oopdeer in Louisville. Is jy bekendgestel, broer Cobble? Would you stand up just a moment? I, just, I don't want to embarrass you, but Dr. Cobbles from the Church of the Open Door. For nearly everybody knows him, I guess, around here because he has a radio ministry and a very outstanding ministry. Sal jy net een oomblik opstaan, en ek wil hom nie in die verleendheid stel nie, maar Dr. Cobble van die Kerk van die Oopdeur, ek reken omtrent allemaal hier rond ken hom, want hy het een radiobediening en een baie besondere bediening. And then I guess... We've had some mighty fine services in Louisville, Kentucky with Dr. Cobbles. It's always a pleasure to get to have him in the meeting. En dan reken ek, het ons een paar goeie dienste in Louisville, Kentucky gehad, saam met Dr. Cobble. Dis altyd een voorig om hom in die dienste te hee. Then these other ministers here also, I suppose some of them from the local churches, and brethren, I may not know you, but I'm happy you're here. And to uh, anticipate in this little time of fellowship together. It's kind of a quick notice. I didn't know until the day before yesterday, I believe it was, that I was coming down. Dan ook hierdie ander predikers hier, ek veronderstel sommige van hulle is van die plaaslike kerke en broers. Ek mag julle dalk nie ken nie, maar ek is blij julle is hier, en om deel te neem aan hierdie tykie van gesamentlike gemeenskap. Dit is soort van een kort kenniskeving, ek het nie geweet voor eergister, denk ek was dit, dat ek hierheen so kom nie. And uh, Brother Oregon, about your, one of your boys here from the local, from the neighborhood, why, you know how he works on a spare of a moment, just as the 
spirit seems to lead him, why, he starts moving. En ons bro Agenbreit, jylle, een van jylle kerres, heel van die plaaslik van die beerd wel, jylle weet hoe hy werk op die ingeving van die oomblik. Net soos die gees om leef, jylle, begin hy beweeg. Recently I was, oh, some six or eight months ago, I was sitting home one day, and I just had fixing to go to Denver, Colorado in a convention. And this little fellow moved into the house and he said, Brother Branham, I have a great revelation from the Lord. I said, yes, sir. He said, the Lord's put in Zurich, Switzerland, on my heart to go over. He said, you want to go with me? Onlangs was ek oor omtrent 6 of 8 maanden gelede, en ek eendig by die huis gesit, en ek was net gereed om te vertrek na Denver, Colorado, na haar conventie toe. En hierdie kerelkie het in die huis ingekom, en hy het gesê, Brother Branham, ek het een groot openbaring van die Heere gehad. Ek het gesê, ja, meneer. Hy het gesê, die Heere plaas Zurich, Zwitserland, op my hart om soon toe te gaan. Gesê, wil jy saam met my gaan? I said, well, I thought one night over Denver, then I go to another meeting. I said, not too important. Why? The more I thought of it, why it seemed to be that if I know the Brother Oregon, if I had a revelation for something, it was good. And it come from God. Ek het gesê, wel, ek het een aan oorkant by Denver, en dan gaan ek na ander bijeenkomst toe, het ek gesê, nie te belangrik nie, hoekom? Hoe meer ek daaran gedink het wel, het dit vir my gelijk, dat as ek geweet het, broer Agenbreit het op een baring oor iets, dit was goed, en dit van God gekom het. And we went to Switzerland, and the Lord gave us 50,000 souls. Went from there up to Karlsruhe, Germany, and he gave us 50,000 more of that. We made 100,000 souls in that little campaign. En ons het Switzerland toe gegaan, en die Heer het ons 50 Duitsen siele gegeen. Gegaan van daar op boe na Karlsruhe, Duitsland, en hy het vir ons nog omtrent 50.000 gegeen. Hy het al 100.000 siele gemaakt in daar die veldtochie. How he blessed us, and now we're planning this summer, or early this autumn, to go back into Africa, Switzerland, India, many tours around the country. Hoe hy ons geseen het, en hy nou beplan ons, eer die somer, of vroeg eer die herfst, om weer in Afrika in te gaan, in Switzerland, India, baie toere oor die land. I go down to Minneapolis, Minnesota, up there at some arena for the next service, and then down Sioux Falls, over into Old Mexico, down to Old Mexico City, an arena there. We're coming back, going to the East Coast, and then from there to Anchorage, Alaska. Ek ga nou Minneapolis, Minnesota toe, daar boe na een of ander arena toe, vir die volgende dienst. Dan onder Sjoeks valle, onder in Old Mexico in, onder na die ou Mexico stad toe arena, daar, ons kom terug op pad na die Oeskes, en dan van daar af na Anchorage, Alaska. And we have some American meetings, we got some, a new tent coming, seating several thousand people in some vans and so forth, for a few American meetings before going back overseas. Dan sal ons a paar Amerikaanse bijeenkomste hee, ons het a paar, a nieuwe tent wat kom, wat a paar duizend mense huis wees, en a paar bakkies en so poort vir a paar Amerikaanse bijeenkomste, voor ons weer oor see gaan. We start with the list of prayers, a few people around here, this is home folks, you know, being back home again, and we certainly appreciate your prayers. Ons verlang voordierend die gebed van jylle mense hier rond, hier die is huismense jylle weet om weer thuis te wees, en ons waardeer jylle gebede baie. And as we come into these little inter-evangelical services, we don't come to represent any church, any denomination, any special groups of people. We only come because we love Jesus and know that you love him too. En terwijl ons in hierdie klein inter-evangelistische diensies inkom, kom ons nie om enige kerk, enige denominatie, enige speciale groep mense te verteenwoordig nie. Ons kom net omdat ons Jesus lief het en ons weet dat jylle kom ook lief het. And we come into these places for a time of fellowship, to fellowship around His Word and around His promised blessing. And I'm, that's the only motive that we have is for these meetings. En ons kom in hierdie plekke in vir a tyd van gemeenskap, om gemeenskap te hee rondom sy woord en rondom sy beloofde sening. En ek, dis die enigste motivering wat ons het, is vir hierdie bijeenkomste. And we're glad tonight to have a... Brother Tommy Nicholson with us here, that I'm sure he's been introduced by Brother Oregon Wright, which is the, the editor for the Christian Man's Voice internationally. En ons is blijf vanavond om Brother Tommy Nicholson by ons te hee hier, 
wat ek seker is dat hy bekend gestel is dier Broer Agen Breit, wat die, die redakteer is van die Christen Mannese Stem Internationaal. A group of men that I'm proud to belong to them, it's a, it's Christian businessmen who has formed their organization and it's become an international affair. They sponsor me in most of my meetings around the world. And he's the editor of the Christian Man's Voice. A group mans wat ek trots is om aan hulle te behoor, dis, dis Christen Sakemanne, wat hulle organisatie gevorm het, en dit het een internationale saak geword. Hulle borg my en die meeste van my bijeenkomst om die wereld, en hy is die redakteer van die Christen Manne sy stem. And so we've been out today getting some testimonies of all cases to see whether divine healing lasts or not. En ons was uit vandag om een paar getuienisse van ou gevallen te kry, om te kyk of die goddelijke geneesing blijvend is of nie. We went out to Mrs. Carter, I hope they're here tonight, Georgie and Mrs. Carter, and Georgie is one of the cases that was healed, I believe, around 14, 15 years ago. Ons het afgegaan na mevrou Kate, ek hoop hulle is hier vanavond, Georgie en mevrou Kate, en Georgie is een van die gevallen wat genees ek, ek dink, omtrent 14, 15 jaar gelede. And one of your local men here, Mr. Hall, which is one of the converts to the Milltown Baptist Church where I used to pastor, and he was healed here a few years ago with cancer, given up in Louisville by the doctors and around the country, and well here tonight, healthy and hearty, I see him setting present. En een van die hele plaaslike manne hier, meneer Hall, wat een van die bekeerlinge van die Milltown Baptiste Kerk was, waar ek die pastoor was. En hy is een paar jaar gelede hier genees van kanker opgegee in Louisville, dier die dokters in oor die land, en is genees hier vanavond gezond en sterk. Ek sien hom hier sit. And we went over to the place where the angel of the Lord came down and told me what to do. En ons het gegaan na die plek toe waar die engel van die Heere afgekom het en vir my gesê het wat om te doen. And now Christian fans, on this point we come to this thing. We do not claim that we can do any healing as our ministers, ministry doesn't feature divine healing, but we believe in divine healing because it's the gospel. En nou, Christen vriend, op hierdie punt, kom ons by hierdie ding. Ons maak nie aanspraak dat ons enige geneesing kan doen nie, omdat ons predikers bediening nie goddelik geneesing by ons nie, maar ons glo in goddelik geneesing omdat dit die evangelie is. And no man can heal anyone. Healing doesn't lay in the power of man. Healing lays in the power of God, and God doesn't give man power to heal. En niemand kan enig iemand genees nie. Geneesing berus nie op die kracht van die mens nie. Geneesing berus op die kracht van God. En God gee nie die mens kracht om te genees nie. God only gave Christ the, the commission to come to the earth to die in our stead for our sins and our sickness. God het net vir Christus die die opdracht gegee om na die aarde toe te kom, om in ons plek te sterf vir ons sondes en ons siektes. The scripture said he was wounded for our transgressions, with his stripes we were, were is the past tense, we were healed. Die skrif het gesê, hy is ter wille van ons oortredinge dierboer, dier sy wonde het daar, het is verlede tyd, het daar vir ons geneesing gekom. And we believe that upon our confession of faith that Jesus, our high priest, has died and rose again to take away sin from the world and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, they are making intercessions upon our confession. En ons geloof grond van ons beledenis, van geloof, dat Jesus ons hoge priester gesterf en opgestaan het om sonde van die wereld weg te neem en sit in die rechterhand van God die Vader, om daar voorspraak te maak, volgens ons beledenis. And when he died for our sins, he could not die for sins without dying for sickness. En toe hy gesterf het vir ons sonde, kon hy nie gesterf het vir sonde, sonder om te sterf vir siekte nie. Sickness is an attribute of sin. Now maybe you haven't sinned, is what causes you to be sick but it was a cause of sin in the first place that brought sickness to the world. Before we ever had any sin, we had no sickness. But when sickness came in, sin is an attribute. Sikte is eenskap van sonde. Nou, miskien het jy nie gesondig wat veroorzaak het dat jy syk is nie. Maar dit was as gevolg van sonde in die eerste plek wat sikte in die wereld ingebring het. Voor ons ooit enige sonde gehad het, 
het ons geen ziekte gehad nie, maar toe ziekte ingekom het, sonde is een eenskap. And now you cannot deal with sin in any way without dealing with sickness or ever attribute that sin produced. And now, ye can nie met sonde werk op enige manier, sonder om te werk met ziekte of enige eenskap wat sonde veroorzaak het nie. Sin, when we deal with sin, we deal with death. When we deal, and sickness is uh, the first stage of death, when sickness takes your body. Sonde, wanneer ons met sonde werk, werk ons met die dood, wanneer ons werk. En ziekte is die, die eerste fase van die dood, wanneer ziekte jou lichaam neem. In a night like this, one little gathering, two days notice for you people to come out and gather in the building tonight. It would be hard to try to go into detail which we would in campaigns where we're lasting for weeks and weeks. To explain what is sickness, where does it come from? There is nothing but what there's a reason for, and there's a cause, and you can't find a cure until you find a cause. Op een aans soos hier die vereen by een komst die twee dag kennisgeving vir die hele mense om te kom en te vergader in gebouw vanavond, dit so moeilik wees om in besonderhede in te gaan. Wat ons so in veldtochte waar ons vir week en week aangaan om te verduidelik wat is siekte, waar kom dit vandaan? Daar is niks waarvoor daar nie een rede is nie, en daar is nie een oorzaak nie, en jy kan nie oplossing vind voor jy nie een oorzaak gevind het nie. I was staying here not long ago. If I went to a doctor, I'm certainly not against doctors, surgeons, operations, hospitals. They're all God's plans. Ek het gesê, hier nie lang gelede nie, as ek na dokter toe gegaan het, ek is beslis nie teen dokters nie, chirurge, operaties, hospitale, hulle is almal Godse plan. But if I went to a doctor and told him I was having a persistent headache, and he'd give me an aspirin and say, now nah, run along, Billy, this will be all right. Maar as ek na die dokter toe gegaan het, en vir hom gesê het, ek het een aanhoudende hoofdpijn, en hy so my aspirin gee en sê, nou, daar gaan jy bille, en dit sal net alles recht wees. Now that man is brushing me off. See, he, the old, a real doctor would diagnose my case and see what was wrong with me, and then he'd get to the bottom where it's at, and then start working from there. Nou, daar die man raak net ontslaaf van my sien, hy die, een rechte dokter sal my vergeval, diagnoseer en kyk wat verkeerd is met my en dan sal hy by die oorzaak uitkom waar dit is en dan van daar af begin werk. Well now that's the way we have to work in, in divine healing or in salvation for the soul. Wel, en nou, o, dis hoe ons moet werk in, in goddelijk geneesing of verlossing van die siel. If a man comes and says that he's disturbed greatly about his is salvation, the first thing to do, you ministers do, you go right down the line till you find back here where he sidestepped or what happened. As a man come and say, is baie bekommerd oor sy, sy verlossing, is die eerste ding om te doen wat jylle predikers doen, jylle gaan recht uit terug en vind destijds daar waar hy nagelaat het of wat gebeur het. From there you bring it up. That's the same thing it is in divine healing. Which divine healing is not some power that God has given to a man. Healing lays alone in the atonement. Van daaraf bring jylle dit op, dis die selfde ding met goddelik geneesing. Wat goddelik geneesing is nie een of ander kracht wat God die mens gegeet nie. Geneesing berus alleenlik op die versoening. I want to ask you something, because I know there's ministers here from the different churches. And how would you preach salvation for the soul? The only thing you could not say, we say, well, I was converted, Brother Branham. I was saved 10 years ago. I was saved 20 years ago. Ek wil jylle iets vraag, want ek weet, daar is predikers hier van die verskillende kerk af. En hoe sal jylle verlossing vir die siel preek? Die enigste ding, jy kan nie sê, ons sê wel, ek is bekeer. Brother Branham, ek is 10 jaar gelede gered. Ek is 20 jaar gelede gered. No, that's a mistake. You accepted it maybe 10 or 20 years ago, but you were saved 1900 years ago when Jesus died at Calvary. He settled a sin question forever there. Nee, dis a fout. Jy het dit miskien 10 of 20 jaar gelede aanvaar, maar jy is 1900 jaar gelede gered toe Jesus op Golgotha gesterf het. Hy het die sonde vraagstuk vir altyd daar afgehandel. That's where he paid the supreme price, made the great sacrifice, that through his death at Calvary, then we have right to salvation. The price was paid. 
Daar is waar hij die hoogste prijs betaal het, en die groot opoffering gemaakt het, dat ons dan door sy dood op Golgotha die recht het op verlossing, die prijs is betaal. So it isn't what you do, it's what he does. And your personal faith as to accept that brings your salvation. And now that he was wounded for our transgressions, with his stripes we were healed. So, it is nie wat jy doen nie. Dit is wat hy gedoen het, in jou persoonlijke geloof, om dit aanvaar bring vir jou verlossing. En nou dat hy is terwille van ons oortredinge deurboor, deur sy wonde het daar vir ons geneesing gekom. So, if I've often made this statement, that you couldn't, um, that you could not by any means, uh, if a serpent or some animal had his paw in my side and was cutting into my side and killing me, there's no need to be trying to cut his paw, just hit him in the head. Kill his head, that kills the whole body. Ek het dikwels hier die stelling gemaakt dat jy nie kon, dat jy nie op enige manier kon, as een slang of een of ander dier sy poot in my sy gehad het, en in my sy ingesne het en bezig, was om my dood te maak, help dit my nie om sy poot af te kap nie. Slaan hom net op die kop, maak sy kop dood, dit maak die hele lichaam dood. Well, that's the way it is with divine healing. When Jesus dealt with sickness or sin at Calvary, he had to deal with the head of it, which was sin, and doing so, he dealt with sickness with it. He didn't have to just cut off the paw, he just killed the head and take care of the rest of it. Wel, het is hoe dit is met goddelijke genezen. Toe Jezus met ziekte of zonde afgerekend het by Golgotha, moes hy met die kop daarvan klaar speel wat zonde was. En door dit te doen, het hy terselfde tijd met ziekte klaar gespeel. Hy hoef nie net die poot af te kap nie, hy het die kop doodgemaak, dit het vir die rest daarvan gesorg. So, Jesus come to bring to the human race everything that at Adam's race was uh, Adam's sin destroyed in the Garden of Eden. So Jesus het te kom om vir die menselike ras te bring alles wat, wat Adam's ras was, of Adam's sonde in die tuin van Eden verwoes het. And now we have the attributes or the earnest of our eternal salvation as we accept Christ as our Savior or Christ as our healer, we have those earnest money of our entire redemption when he comes. En nou het ons die eigenskappe of die onderpunt van ons eeuwige verlossing, soos ons Christus as ons verlosser aanvaar, of Christus as ons geneeser. Ons het daar die onderpunt geld van ons volledige verlossing wanneer hy kom. We're tempted. All of us are tempted. All of us sin. There's none without sin. Every day we sin. Paul said he had to die daily. And if we say we sin and have no sin, then the Bible says we make God to lie. And we could not do that. So we sin daily. And it's grace, God's grace that saves us. Ons word versoek, allemaal van ons word versoek, allemaal van ons zondig. Daar is niemand zonder zonde nie. Elke dag zondig ons, Paulus het gesê, hy moet dagelijks sterwe. En as ons sê, ons zondig en het geen zonde nie, dan sê die Bijbel, maak ons God tot de leenaar. En ons kan dit nie doen nie, so ons zondig dagelijk en dis genade, Gods genade, wat ons red. And as we confess our wrongs, God just to forgive them. And your, your confession, as long as it holds good, your salvation is perfect. Same as it with divine healing. It's your personal faith in a resurrected Lord Jesus. En soos ons, ons foute beleid, is God rechtvaardig om hulle te vergewe, en jou jou beleidnis, so lang as wat het hou, is jou verlossing volmaak. Dis die selde met goddelijke genezing, dis jou persoonlijke geloof, in die herrese, Heere Jesus. So tonight, I thought I would just, in having this little time of fellowship with you, and in this place here, where all churches, can, this little group of people, can just gather together here, in the little city of, Out Georgetown. So vanavond, ek het geding, ek sal net om hierdie tykje van gemeenskap met julle te hee, en in hierdie plek hier, waar alle kerke kan, hierdie groep die mense, net kan vergader hier in hierdie stadje van, van Georgetown. And we, first we want to be thankful to the brother Arvin Wright and those who made this possible. We want to thank the school board for letting us have this gym room tonight for this service. En ons eers wil ons dankbaar wees toen er broer Agenbreid en hulle wat hier die moendlik gemaakt het 
ons wil die school raad bedank, dat hulle vir ons die gymnasium beskikbaar gestel het vanavond vir hierdie dienst. And I want to thank every minister of the chair and every member of any church, whether it is Protestant, Catholic, whether it is Orthodox, Jew, whatever it may be, we're grateful for you to be here. En ons wil elke prediker bedank wat hier is en elke lidmaat van enige kerk of dit protestant, katholiek is, of dit orthodox, jood is, of wat het ook al mag wees. Ons is dankbaar dat jylle hier is. And want you to know that we put no strains or no attachments on anyone's religion, whatever you believe, as long as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and He's your Savior, you're my brother and sister. And so that's the way we believe it. En ek wil hier jylle moet weet dat ons geen touties of geen aanhangsels aan enig iemand sy godsdienst ek nie. Wat jy ook al glo, so lang as jy in die Heere Jesus Christus glo, en hy jou verlosser is, is jy my broer en sister, en so dis hoe ons dit glo. And now, we have his blessed word here before us. Now, if there's any man that's able to, to pull that back of his fingers, to open it this way, but there's no man can open the book to understand it except Christ himself. The Bible was written by inspiration. En nou het ons een geseende woord hier voor ons. Nou daar is enige mens wat in staat is om om daar die om te blaai met sy vinger, maar dit so kan oopmaak. Maar daar is geen mens wat die boek kan oopmaak om te verstaan, behalwe Christus self nie. Die Bijbel is geskryf dier inspiratie. Therefore, shall we just bow our heads a moment to speak to the author before we open his book. Daarom sal ons net ons hoofde vir een oomblik buig om met die skrywer te praat voor ons sy boek oopma. Our kind heavenly father, we have gathered here in the name of thy beloved son, the Lord Jesus, who died freely for our sins and trespasses. He died that he might save us from a life of sin and would take us home to heaven some glorious day at his coming. Ons dierbare hemelse vader, ons is hier vergader in naam van die geliefde Seen, die Heere Jesus, wie vrylik vir ons sondes en oortredinge gesterf het. Hy het gesterf, dat hy ons van een leven van sonde kon red, en ons huis te kon neem na die hemel, een wonderlijke dag by sy komst. He died also, that by stripes, that we might be healed of our sickness. And he was wounded for our transgressions, his bruise for our iniquity. The chastening of our peace was up on him, and with his stripes we were healed, saith the prophet. Hy het ook gesterf dat ons dier sy wonde genees kan word van siekte. En hy is ter wille van ons oortredinge deurboor, hy is ter wille van ons ongerechtigheid verbrysel, die straf wat vir ons die vrede aanbring was op hom, en dier sy wonde het daar vir ons genees gekom, sê die profeet. Now we pray thee, Heavenly Father, to be merciful to us, and that we just have this one night of gathering here in this city, Nou bid ons tot u, Himmelse Vader, om ons genadig te wees, en dat ons net hierdie een aand van bijeenkomst hier in hierdie stad het. We pray that you will bless those who has made this possible for the gathering, and also those who have gathered with us to fellowship around the word. Ons bid dat u diegene sal sien wat hierdie moendlik gemaakt het vir die bijeenkomst, en ook hulle wat saam met ons vergader het om gemeenskap te hou rondom die woord. And we pray, Father, that you'll bless everyone that's in divine presence also. En ons bid, Vader, dat u ook elkeen sal sien wat in godelike teenwoordigheid is. And may it be a night to long be remembered. May it be a night like the apostolic gathering of days of gold. When people gather together, little groups. En mag dit de aand wees wat lang en hou sal word, mag dit de aand wees, soos die apostolische bijeenkomst van vroeger daar, toe mense by mekaar gekom het in groepies. One night while the St. Paul was preaching way into the night, a young man we were taught fell from the upper story, and his life was taken from him, and Paul laid his body over the boy, and God gave him back his life. Jena terwijl Paul is gepreke tot laat in die nacht, het een jong man word ons geleer van die boonste verdieping afgeval en is sy leven geneem. En Paulus het sy lichaam oor die seen gelee en God het vir hom sy leven teruggegee. We're thankful to have the same gospel tonight to preach to the people. That God still lives and reigns. He heals the sick. He forgives all of our sins. And Father, we pray tonight that you will bless us as a people. Ons is dankbaar om die selde evangelie te hee vanavond 
om vir die mense te verkondig, dat God steeds lewe en regeer, hy genees die siekes, hy vergewe al ons sondes, en Vader ons bid vanavond, dat hy ons sal seen as a volk. And now thou hast said in our humble word, this, that you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And we believe that what we ask, we receive, because it's according to his word. En nou, hy het gesê, en hy nederige woord, hier die, as jylle die vader enig iets in my naam vraag, sal ek dit doen, en ons glo, dat ons ontvang dit wat ons vraag, want dis volgens sy woord. And when we leave here tonight, in different groups, and going to our different homes, will you visit us in such a way, that we'll have a testimony in our heart, and our conversation as we leave here, will be like those who came from Emmaus, on the first resurrection, when they had met the resurrected Lord Jesus for the first time. En wanneer ons hier vertrek vanavond in verskillende groepen, om na ons verskillende huise toe te gaan, sal jy ons op soe manier besoek, dat ons getenis in ons hart sal hee, en ons gesprek, soos ons hier vertrek, sal wees soos diegene, wat van Imaeus afgekom het, by die eerste opstanding, toe hulle die herreese Heere Jesus, vir die eerste keer ontmoet het. They said, did not our hearts burn within us when he talked to us by the way? May you talk to every heart tonight, for we ask it in the name of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hulle het gesê, was ons hart nie branden in ons, toe hy met ons gepraat het langs die pad nie? Mag hy met elke hart praat vanavond, want ons vraad het, in die naam van die geliefde Seen, Heere Jesus, Amen. Opening to the Gospel of St. Jude in the Bible, which is only one book, one chapter. And in the third verse of this chapter, I wish to read for just a little text to get a context from it for what I'd like to speak on for the next few moments. Then we will pray for the sick. Mark nou oop by die evangelie van Judas in die Bijbel, wat dit een boek is, een hoofstuk. En in die derde vers van hierdie hoofstuk wil ek graag net vir een tekst lees om een context daaruit te neem, waarover ek graag wil praat vir die volgende paar oomblikke, dan sal ons bid vir die siekes. Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. May the Lord add his blessings to his word. Geliefdes, ek alle ewer aanwend om aan jylle oor ons gemeenskapelike saligheid te skrywe. Het ek die noodzakelik het gevoel om jylle dier my skrywe te vermaan om krachtig te stry vir die geloof wat eenmaal aan die heiliges oorgelever is. En mag die Heere sy sieninge voeg by sy woord. This was wrote some 33 years after the, the day of Pentecost after the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on the early saints. Hierdie is omtrent 33 jaar na die dag van Pinkster geskryf, na die uitstorting van die Heilige Geest op die vroege Heiliges. Jude calls himself a servant and brother to Jesus Christ. And he wrote this book to the church and told them that they should earnestly contend. Judas noem homself a diensknig en broer van Jesus Christus. En hy het hierdie boek aan die kerk geskryf, en vir hulle gesê, dat hulle krachtig moes instry. The only place in the sacred writing that's ever told us to contend, because we're not supposed to have contentions among us, but to earnestly contend for a purpose, a faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Die enigste plek in die heilige geskrifte, wat daar ooit vir ons gesê word om te stry, want ons is nie vir ons stel om stryere onder ons te heen nie, maar om krachtig te stry vir het doel, een geloof wat eenmaal aan die heiliges oorgelever is. En dat, we are not to contend, and we are not trying to contend, but we are wanting to face this. En dat, ons moet nie stry nie, en ons probeer nie om te stry nie, maar ons wil dit trotseer. If I should ask tonight, how many Methodists is in the crowd, how many Baptists is in the crowd, how many Nazarenes, Pilgrim Holiness, Catholics, there'd be hands go up, and even this little group of people here tonight, there would be many hands go up. As ek so vraag vanavond, hoeveel Methodists was in die gehoor, hoeveel Baptists was in die gehoor, 
hoeveel Nazareners, pelgrimheiligheid, katholiek, daar so hande opgaan, en self hierdie groepe mense hier vanavond, so daar baie hande opgaan. And each one of us, in our different denominations, would want to say, our church was contending for that faith that was once delivered to the saints. En elkeen van ons in ons verskillende denominaties so wou sê, ons kerk het gestry vir haar geloof wat eenmaal aan die heiliges oorgelever is. I want to say it in the, about the Baptist church. Someone else would want to say it about the Methodist church. Someone else about the Catholic church. And some other about, it would be that way in the little groups of people. Ek so dit wil sê van die Baptiste kerk en iemand ander so dit wil sê van die Methodiste kerk. Iemand anders van die katholieke kerk en iemand anders van die, dat so so wees in die klein groepies mense. Now, I want to believe that we're all contending for that faith. I believe that everyone is contending for the best of their knowledge to the faith. Nee, ek wil geloof dat ons allemaal strijd vir haar geloof. Ek geloof dat elkeen strijd vir die beste van hulle kennis vir die geloof. But in this thing, so many different denominations... There's got to be something right and something wrong. Now, that's the way I try to be, my brother, sister, that there's, you never seen a man drunk and sober at the same time. You never seen a black, white bird. There's no such a thing. Maar hierin, die er so veel verskillende nominaties te sien, moet daar iets recht en iets verkeerd wees. Nou, dis hoe ek probeer wees, my broer, sister, dat daar is, jy sien nooit a dronk man en a nuchter op die selfde tyd nie. Jy sien nooit a swart wit voel nie. Daar is nie so iets nie. And there's no right and wrong mixed together. It's either right or it's wrong. En daar is geen recht en verkeerd wat vermeng is nie. Dit is of recht of dis verkeerd. And that's the way that I believe God. If I didn't believe that he was the same God that lived in the days of Moses, he wasn't the same God to fulfill every promise that he made, then I couldn't have faith to accept him. Now, there's only, that's only sensible and reasonable to think that... En dis hoe ek God glo. En as ek nie geglo het, hy was die selfde God wat in die daal van Mooses geleef het nie. Hy nie die selfde God was om elke belofte te vervul wat ek gemaakt het nie. Dan kon ek nie geloof gehad het om hom te aanvaar nie. Nou, daar is net, dis net verstandig en redelijk om so te dink. What good would it do us tonight? You're not here just to be seen. You wouldn't come out in this rain and gather in a little place like this just to be seen. You're here for one purpose. That's to find something good. And I pray that God will give each one of you something real good that you will never forget. Wat so dat ons vanavond help? Jylle is nie hier net om gesien te word nie. Jylle so nie uitgekom het in hierdie reen en in a plekkie soos hierdie vergaar net om gesien te word nie. Jylle is hier vir een doel, dis om iets goed te vind. En ek bid dat God elkeen van jylle iets baie goed sal gee, wat jylle nooit sal vergeet nie. And each one of you Christians, may he raise your joy to him, to cause you to serve him better than you've ever served him in all your life. En elkeen van jylle Christene, mag hy jylle vreegde groot maak in hom, so dat jylle hom beter kan dien, as wat jylle hom in jylle jylle lewe gedien het. Nou, what good would it do to serve a God that served Moses, a God that Moses served, and if he wasn't the same God today? No, what shall it help om a God to dien wat Moses gedien het? A God wat Moses gedien het, as hy nie die selfde God vandag was nie. What good would it do to serve a historical God if he's, no, if he's powerless and gone and dead today? I want to ask you that question. Wat so dit help om my historische God te dien as hy geen, as hy vandag krachteloos en weg en dood is? Ek wil jylle daar die vraag vraag. U het maar het oor. Nee, wil jy daar. If I can't serve a God that's a living and right here present to help me when I have need, then what's the use of serving God? Jylle so dit nie wil doen nie, en ek ook nie. As ek nie een God kan dien wat lewe net hier teenwoordig is, om my te help wanneer ek behoeftig is nie, Wat help dit dan om God te dien? If he was a God, but he isn't a God now, or if he was a God of power, and he's lost his power now, there's something weakening about that God. Isn't that right? As hy een God was, maar hy is nou nie een God nie, of as hy een God van kracht was, 
Hij nou sy kracht verloor het, is daar iets swak aan daar God. Is dit nie recht nie? Now we want to reason together. There's something wrong if it isn't, if he was and he isn't now, then there's something wrong with God. Nou wil ons die saak uitmaak. Daar is iets verkeerd as dit nie is nie. As hy was, en hy is nie nou nie, dan is daar iets verkeerd met God. If, the, if God was an, a great, mighty uh, warrior in battle, and he was a great healer of the diseases, and he was a great in all these attributes in the days gone by, and then he's lost all of his power, and he isn't the same today, yet his word says he is the same today, promised he'd do the very same thing through all ages until he come again, it's undisputable in the Bible. As the God a great, mighty creator in the strijd was, en hy was een groot geneeser van siektes, en hy was groot in al sy eenskap en die daar wat voorbij is, en dan het hy sy al sy kracht verloor, en hy is nie diezelfde vandag nie, toch sê sy woord, hy is diezelfde vandag, beloof hy so precies diezelfde dinge doen, dier al die uur, totdat hy weer gekom het, dis onteensiglik in die Bijbel. Hebrews 8, 13, 13, 8 letter says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hier Hebreers 8:13 of 13:8 liever sê dat Jesus Christus dieselfde is gister vandag en tot in eeuwigheid. That's the same in principle, the same in power, the same in resurrection, the same in omnipotence, the same in omnipresence, the same in and and all. Dis dieselfde in beginsel, dieselfde in krag, dieselfde in opstanding. Dieselfde in almacht, dieselfde in al omteenwoordigheid, dieselfde in, in alles. He's, he's just the same as he was in everything that he once was, he is today. The scripture says that's true. All things of him is the same. Hey, hy is net dieselfde as wat hy was. En alles wat hy eenmaal was, is hy vandag. Die skrif sê dis waar. Alles van hom is dieselfde. Now, so if we each want to believe that, but yet we're limited to a creed. Well, say I belong to the Baptist church. I say Baptist because that's the church I was ordained in. Say, I, uh, well, the Baptist say, well, our creed's right. The Methodist wants their creed right. No, so as ons, elkeen wil dit geloof, maar toch beperk hulle om tot een geloosbeleidenis. Wel, sê hulle, ek behoort aan die Baptiste kerk. Ek sê Baptist, want dis die kerk waarin ek georden is. Sê ek wel die baptiste sê, wel ons geloofsbeleidnis is recht. Die methodiste wil hy, hulle geloofsbeleidnis moet recht wees. But if we limit God, that creed, I have nothing against it, that's all right. But if we limit God to that creed, then we limit God. And we try to say that you can walk this far. Maar as ons God beperkt, daar die geloofsbeleidnis, ek het niks daar teen nie, dis alles recht. Maar as ons God beperkt tot daar die geloofsbeleidnis, dan beperk ons God en ons probeer sê dat ons so ver kan loop. Maybe we don't have the faith to walk where Enoch did when he took a little walk with God one afternoon and went home with him without death. And um, and the bar saw of Joshua who marched around the walls of Jericho 13 times and, and shouted real loud and the walls fell down. Misschien het ons nie genoeg geloof om te loop waar hy nog het, toe hy een wandeling met God geneem het eenmiddag en hy is toegegaan het saam met hom sonder die dood nie. En, en ook van Joshua, wat derde keer om die mire van Jericho masseer het, en baie hard geskree, en die mire ingeval het. We may not have the faith to shot down walls, we may not have faith to walk home with God, but let's not stand in somebody's way who does have that faith. Ons mag miskien nie die geloof hee om mire om te skree nie. Ons mag dank nie die geloof hee om saam met God huis te te loop nie. Maar, laat ons nie in iemandse pad staan, wat daar die geloof het nie. If, if they doesn't agree with our creed, and they have faith, let's move right on. And please, say the Lord bless you, my brother, and go right on, regardless of what church he belongs to, that makes no difference, as long as he's a Christian and believer. As, as dit nie ooreenstem met ons geloof beleidenis nie, en hulle het geloof, laat ons rechtheid aan beweeg en glo en sê, die Heere sien jou, my broer, en gaan recht aan, ongeacht van wat er kerk hy behoort, dit maak geen verskil nie, solank as wat hy christen en gelovig is. And do you know, Christian friend, that's what the world wanted to see today? En weet ek, christen vriend, dis wat die wereld wil sien vandag. 
I landed in Bombay, India, where I had the largest crowd of 500,000 people, I, the largest crowd I ever preached to at one time in my life, was in Bombay. Ik het geland in Bombay, India, waar ik de grootste schade gehad het van 500.000 mensen. Die grootste schade voor wie ik nog ooit gepreek het op één dag in mijn leven, was in Bombay. When I met there, here comes the bishop of the Methodist Church and many of the great churches. Where come the archbishop, the Hindu, uh, Hinduist church there, and many other the great outstanding churches. They met me out there where thousands of people come to the airport. En toe ik daar opgegaan het, hier in die biskop van die Methodiste kerk gekom en baie van die groot kerke. Daar in die aardbiskop gekom die Hindu, Hindu kerk daar en baie van die ander besondere kerke. En het my daar buiten ontmoet, maar duisende mense na die lichthawe toe gekom het. And when they come and they talk, they up to the Taj Mahal Hotel and they met in a room similar to this with all the celebrity of the city and the Ray Jaws and everything. And the bishop of the Methodist Church, he said, Brother Branham, we don't accept you as a missionary. He said, because we don't want to hear the word missionary. And to all come, it all may be the Taj Mahal Hotel at Blay. And let vergader in a sort of like a so here with all the hoge places van the stad and the Rajas and alles. En die biskop van die Methodiste kerk, hy het gesê, Broe Brenham, ons ervaar jou nie as een sendeling nie. Hy het gesê, want ons wil nie van die woord sendeling hoor nie. So because you people in the West, with your Western education, does not understand the scripture in the light of an oriental book. And that's true. Gesê, want jylle mense in die Weste met jylle Westerse opvoeding, verstaan nie die skrif in die licht van die oosterse boek nie. En dis waar. For all of our theology, if you ever go to Jerusalem or to the eastern country where this Bible is written, it's a brand new book to you. Our western ideas are far from the eastern ways. Met al ons theologie, as jy ooit na Jerusalem toe gaan, of na die oosterse land, waar hier die Bijbel geskryf is, is dit een splinter nieuwe boek vir jou. Ons westerse idees is ver van die oosterse gebruike. You can't understand the parables and so forth, the teachings, until you go there and see those same customs lived out today. Jy sal nie, kan nie die gelijkenisse verstaan en so forth die onderrichting, totdat jy soon toe gaan en daar die selde gebruike vandag uitgeleef sien word nie. And many people have said, I have nothing against seminaries and students and monasteries and so forth, but all of that will never know God. It's only knowing catechism and so forth like that. En baie mense het gestuur, en ek het niks tegen kweekskool en studenten en kloosters en so forth nie, maar dit alles sal hulle God nooit ken nie. Dis net om katechisme te ken en so forth soos dit. To know God is to know the person, Christ himself, and to know him is life. Not to know your textbook or to know your creed or to know your catechism is life. It's to know Christ, the person, is life eternal. And that's what we wish to know. Om God te ken is om die persoon Christus self te ken. En om hom te ken is lewe, nie om jou tekstboek te ken of om jou geloosbeleidnis te ken of om jou katechisme te ken, is nie lewe nie. Dis om Christus die persoon te ken, is ewig lewe. En dis wat ons graag wil ken. Now, this bishop said to me, he said, Reverend Bowen, of theology, said we had the Bible a thousand seven hundred years before you was a nation. That's right. Nu hier die biskop het vir my gesê, het gesê, eerware brennen van theologie gesê, ons het al die Bijbel gehad, 1700 jaar voor jylle een volk was. Dis recht. St. Thomas went down and uh, stood in the church and preached for St. Thomas, the original church that he established in India, when he went down from Jerusalem to India and established the church. St. Thomas het soon toe gegaan. Ek het gestaan en preek in die kerk wat St. Thomas, die oorspronkelijk klerk, wat hy in Indie gevestig het, toe hy afgegaan het van Jerusalem af na Indie en die kerk gevestig het. And he said, we've had the Bible ever since then. And we've had Christianity since then. But said, it's a low ebb in India. And he said, we have heard of Dr. Reedhead, the man that came to you. En hy het gesê, Ons het die Bijbel al van toe af gehad, en ons het Christendom al van toe af gehad, maar gesê, dis op een laag vlak in Indie, en hy het gesê, ons het gehoor van Dr. Reedhead, die man wat na jou toe gekom het. Which is the, the president of the great uh, uh, Sudan missions, the greatest in the world, who came to me and he said, Brother Branham, said, I've got enough degrees that I could plaster a wall with them. 
wat die die president van die groot Sudan sending was, die grootste in die wereld, wat na my toe gekom het, en hy het gesê, verbrenn hom gesê, ek het genoeg graden, dat ek een meer kan toeplak met hulle. Doctor uh, Theology, do, uh, uh, bachelor's degree, and all kinds of degrees, that I've studied that, that was about eight years old, but he said, Brother Branham, where is Christ in all of it? Doctor van Theologie, a doc, a, a bacalaureus grad, en allerhande soort grade gesê, ek het studeer van dat ek omtrent acht jaar oud was, maar hy het gesê, Brother Branham, waar is Christus in dit alles? He said, has the teachers been wrong? I said, the teachers hasn't been wrong, sir. But what it is that you'll never know Christ by theology. You'll never know Christ by education. Hy het gesê, was die leraars verkeerd? Ek het gesê, die leraars was nie verkeerd, die meneer. Maar wat het is dat jy Christus nooit dier theologie sal ken nie? Jy sal Christus nooit dier geleerdheid ken nie. You've got to know Christ by personal experience of being born again of the spirit that comes down and changes your life and makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what does the difference. That's what makes the difference in uh, uh, Avia. Jy moet Christus ken dier persoonlijke ondervinding om wedergebore te wees dier sy gees wat afkom en jou leven verander en jou nieuwe skepsel in Christus Jesus maak. Dis wat die verskil maak. Dis wat die verskil vir jou maak. Now, that's the reason we have so many different denominations and theories. They're all all right, but the real thing, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said in St. John, the Gospel of St. John, the fourth chapter, or the third chapter, pardon me, to Nicodemus, except a man be born again of water and spirit, he will in no wise enter into the kingdom. No matter what church you go to, that's Jesus Christ's own words. Nou, dis waarom ons soveel verskillende nominaties en theorieën het, dis alles goed en wel, maar die rechte ding, Jesus Christus, die Seen van God, het gesê in Johannes, die evangelie van Johannes, die vierde hoofstuk, of die derde hoofstuk, verskoon my, vir Nicodemus. As iemand nie weer gebore word, uit water en geest nie, sal hy op geen manier in die koninkryk ingaan nie, maak nie saak, na wat er kerk toe jy gaan nie. Dis Jesus Christus sy eie woorde. Now to be born means to be delivered from. Now, unless you are delivered by the Holy Spirit in your life to a new life in Christ, then our creeds and things are no good. But they're good, they're all right, they're moral teachings and so forth, which help us, but the real personal Christ Jesus. Nou om gebore te word, beteken om verlost te word van. Nou, as jy nie verlos word dier die heilige geest in jou leven tot een nieuwe leven in Christus nie, dan help ons geloof beleidende sin goed niks nie. Maar hulle is goed, hulle is voordelig, hulle is morele lesse en sovoort, wat ons help, maar die rechte persoonlijke Christus Jesus. And that's what's made the meetings what it has been today and swept around the world, is because by the grace of God to introduce to the larger small crowds a resurrected Lord Jesus right now present in any same power that he ever was in. We don't have to guess at it. En dis wat die beeenkomste gemaakt het, maar dit was vandag, en om die wereld te laat gaan het, is omdat ons dier die genade van God bekend te stel, aan die klein of grootskare, en hy rees sy Heere Jesus net nou, heidiglik, in sy selfde kracht waar hy ooit was. Ons hoef nie te raai daar oor nie. He said, Brother Branham, we have the word, we have the Bible, the bishop said in India. But that what we're interested in is not your theology. So what we're interested in, has God visit you, Yankees, with a spirit or a gift that can make this Bible live again? Hy het gesê, Brother Branham, ons het die woord, ons het die Bible, het die biskop gesê in India. Maar gesê, waarin ons belangstel is nie jylle theologie nie. Gesê, waarin ons belangstel, het God jylle jenkies met een gees of een gave besoek, wat hier die Bijbel weer kan laat lewe. So we know the Bible, and so, I said, well, you just admitted we didn't know it, but I don't know it too well, but I know the author real well. And I said, that's the main thing. Gesê, ons ken die Bijbel, en gesê, ek het gesê, wel, Jy het nou net erken, ons ken dit nie, maar ek ken dit nie goed nie, maar ek ken die auteur baie goed. Ek het gesê, dis die hoofdzaak. Hy sê, dat's what we want to know. Have you faith enough in God to make these divine promises that he's made, so have you faith enough to make them reality? 
I said, by the grace of God, God will. Het gezegd, dis wat ons wil weet. Het jy genoeg geloof van God om hierdie goddelike beloftes wat hy gemaakt het te doen? Gesê, het jy genoeg geloof om hulle een werkelijkheid te maak? Ek het gesê, dier Godse genade sal God. And that afternoon I was entertained by 17 different religions that denied Christianity. Some of them worship gnats and some of them horses and some cattle and some Buddha and Mahalans and so forth. En daar die middag is ek ontvang dier 17 verskillende godsdienste wat christendom ontken het, partij van hulle aan bid muggies, en partij van hulle aan bid pere, partij beeste, partij boeddha en muhammadaan en so voort. En die al had die theologie, very good, everything was works, not what you have to do, do this, do that, all the works, no grace to it at all. En hulle het allemaal hulle theologie gehad, baie goed, alles was werke, iets wat jy moet doen, doen dit, doen dat, Alles en werken, geen genade daaraan nie, hoegenaamd nie. Am I too loud for you? Is this a rebounding? I, uh, I hope not. Is ek te hard vir jy, daar, daar is net een echo, ek, ek hoop nie so nie. But notice, that night, in the prayer line, when the Lord Jesus came on the scene, they set the rejoice on their pillars and so forth, and it was over two hours getting into the line up to where we could get to the speaker stand. Ja, let op, daar die aand in die gebedsrei, Toen die Heere Jesus op die toneel gekom, daar het die radjes op hulle kissens gesit en sovoort, en dit was meer as twee ure om in die rij te kom, tot waar ons by die sprekers podium kon kom. And when the Lord Jesus came up and told a man, that was totally blind for 20 years, seeing the vision over him, and know it was going to be healed, I challenged every one of them to come heal the man. Of course they said still. En toe die Heere Jesus opgekom het, en vir die man vertel het, wat heel te maal blind was vir 20 jaar, een visioen van hom gesien het, en geweet het hy so genees word, het ek elkeen van hulle uitgedaag om die man te kom genees. Natuurlijk het hulle stil gesit. But our Lord Jesus gave the man his sight. Thousands and thousands and thousands came to Christ at one time. Maar ons Heere Jesus het die man sy sig teruggegeen, duisende der duisende der en duisende het na Christus toegekom op een slag. There it is, it isn't whether our creeds work, they work all right and more around. But to reproduce the Lord Jesus and his promise is to know him, not your creed. Daar is dit, dis nie of ons geloof beleidende sy werk nie. Hulle sal goed werk in morele lewe, maar om die Heere Jesus en sy belofte voor te bring, is om hom te ken nie jou geloof beleidende nie. Now, quickly to our text. And I'll try to be just as quick as I possibly can and get the line started, because it's midweek and you people work. Nou vinnig na ons tekst, en ons sal net so gauw probeer maak as wat ek moendlik kan, en die rij aan die gang kry, want dis in die middel van die week, en die hele mense werk. Now, listen close. The text says tonight, Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. This is St. Jude now, writing to the church 33 years after Pentecost. Nou, en luister goed. Die tekst sê vanavond, Geliefdes, ek alle ewer aanwet om aan jylle oor ons gemeenskapelike saligheid te skrywe. Hier is Judas nou wat aan die kerk skryf, 33 jaar na Pinkster. And exalting you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, not a faith, the faith, that was once delivered unto the saints. Jylle te vermaan om krachtig te stryf vir die geloof, nie een geloof nie, die geloof, wat eenmaal aan die heiliges oorgelever is. Now each one of us in our churches, they are fine, and, and I want you to be with your church, and support your church, and help us uh, for the glory of God. Nou elkeen van ons in ons kerke, hulle is goed, en, en ek wil hee, jylle moet by jylle kerke wees, en jou kerk ondersteun, en dit help tot die eer van God. But now, let's go back and find out now, there's got to be something, if we, he said, earnestly contend for the faith, that was once delivered to the saints, then there's surely some way of knowing what the faith was. Maar laat ons nou terug gaan en uitvind, nou daar moet iets wees as ons. Hy het gesê, krachtig strij vir die geloof wat eenmaal aan die heilige is, oorgelever is. Dan is daar toch sekerlijke manier om te weet wat die geloof was. Now, let's go back in the Bible. I think that would be logical and proof enough to all of us if we go back and see what the saints, what kind of faith they had. 
Nou, kom ons gaan terug in die Bijbel. Ik denk dat zal logisch wees en genoeg bewijs voor allemaal, als ons terug gaan en kyk waar die heilig is, wat, wat er soort geloof hulle gehad het. En if we were exhausted to earnestly contend for this faith, we find out what kind of faith they had, then we ought to contend for that faith. In other words, say this is right. Now we'll find out what it was. En as ons vermaan is om krachtig te strijd vir die geloof, ons uitvind wat er geloof hulle gehad het, dan behoort ons te strijd vir haar geloof. Met ander woorde sê, hier is recht, nou ons sal uitvind wat het is. Before we were ever called saints in the Bible, they were in the New Testament. John the Baptist come between the law and Christ, which was a gap of a keystone that locked the two dispensations together. Voor hulle ooit heiliges genoem is in die Bijbel was hulle in die Nieuwe Testament, het Johannes die dooper tussen die wet en Christus gekom, wat een gaping was op een sluitsteen, wat die twee bedelings met mekaar verbind het. Now, we have to begin with Christ if we're going to talk about Christian faith, because he is the, the beginning of Christian faith. Nou, ons moet begin met Christus, as ons moes praat van christelijke geloof, want hy is die, die begin van christelijke geloof. John came, John the Baptist, preaching the wilderness of Judea, and he never done one miracle, never done any sign. But he just condemned the churches and condemned the priests and the rabbis and so forth, and told them there was coming one. Johannes had to come, Johannes die doper gepreek in die woestijn van Judea. En hy het nooit een wonderwerk gedoen nie, nooit enige teken gedoen nie. Maar hy het net die kerke veroordeel en die priesters en die rabbis en soorts veroordeel. En vir hulle gesê, daar sal een kom. And at the baptism of service when he was baptizing, he saw Jesus coming with the light following him. And he said, behold the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. En by die doopdienst toe hy gedoop het, het hy Jesus sien kom met die licht wat hom vol. En hy het gesê, aanskou die lamp van God by die sonde van die wereld wegneem. And Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came from out of heaven. And the voice from it saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am pleased to dwell. The original translation says, in whom I am pleased to dwell in. En Jesus is gedoop, die heilige geest het uit die himmel gekom, en een stem daar uit wat sê, dit is my geliefde sien, in wie ek een welbaha het. Die oorspronkelijke vertaling sê, in wie ek een welbaha het, om in te woon. Which God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He was God in flesh. Wat God was in Christus om die wereld met homself te persoon. Hy was God in vlees. Now, now let's notice what kind of a life that he did. And I want to ask you something, you people, as we're talking. Nou, kom ons let op wat er soort lewe hy gehad het. En ek wil julle iets vraag, julle mense, terwijl ons praat. What he was then... He should be, if that's the faith that he introduced to the world, that ought to be the faith that we should contend for tonight. Is that right? Amen. That's right. It should be. All right? Wat hy toe was, moet hy wees, as dit die geloof is wat hy aan die wereld bekendgestel het, behoort dit die geloof te wees, waar vir ons vanavond moet strijd. Is dit recht? Dit is recht, dit behoort te wees. Goed. Now we notice as soon as he started off in his ministry, we'll watch what kind of a ministry he had. We'll start from the first chapter of St. Luke, quoting it by memory. You might read it when you wish to. Nou, ons let op, zodra hy begin het met sy bediening. Ons sal doppel wat er soort bediening hy gehad het. Ons sal begin by die eerste hoofstuk van Lukas, die er dit uit geheer aan te haal. Jylle kan dit lees wanneer jylle wil. St. Luke, the first chapter, it teaches that Jesus began to go about doing good for the people. He would pray for the sick and they'd be healed. Now that's one of the things that he did. Pray for the sick. Look as the eerste hoofstuk het het geleer dat Jesus begin rond gaan het, dier goed te doen aan die mense, hy so per die siekes bid, en hulle so genees word. Nou, dis een van die dinge wat hy gedoen het, om te bid vir die siekes. And one day, now listen close now, cause it'll, if you do not listen close to catch every word, it'll be a stumbling block to you in the next 20 or 30 minutes when the prayer line starts. See? Now listen close. En een dag, nou luister goed nou, want dit sal... As jylle nie goed luister om elke woord te begryp nie, sal dit een strekkelbrok vir jylle wees, binnen die volgende 20 of 30 minuten, wanneer die gebedsrij begin sien. Nou luister goed. The first thing we find Jesus doing, after he had chose two or three of his apostles, and one of his name was, um, was Philip. And Philip was a good man, Saint Philip. En die eerste ding wat ons Jesus sien doen, nadat hy twee of drie van sy apostels gekies het, en die een van hulle sy naam was, was Philippus, 
And Philippus was a queer man, St. Philippus. And when he seen and knew that that was the Messiah, because he saw him praying for people and them getting well, he went over around about 30 miles around behind the mountains there of Judea, and he found his friend whose name was Nathaniel. And Nathaniel was under a tree praying. En toe hy gesien en geweet het, daardie was die Messias, omdat hy om sien bid het vir die mense dat hulle gezond geword het, het hy oorkant toe gegaan omtrent 30 mijl achter om die berge van Judea daar, en sy vriend gevind met die naam van Nathaniel, en Nathaniel was onder een boom in gebed. And he said, come see who I have found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And he said, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel said, he said, come see. En hy het gesê, kom kyk wie ek gevind het, Jesus van Nazareth, die sien van Joseph. En hy het gesê, kan enig iets goeds uit Nazareth kom? Nathaniel het gesê, hy het gesê, kom kyk. Now I think that's the best answer that any person could give at any time, is before criticizing anything, come and see it first. Look at it yourself. Lord of the light of Bible, and see if it's right. Nou, ek dink dis die beste antwoord wat enig iemand kon gee op enige tyd is, voor enige iets te kritiseer, kom en kyk eers daarna, en kyk self daarna, leem in die licht van die Bijbel, en kyk of dit recht is. No matter what it seems like and what others say, the religion of Jesus Christ has never been popular, and it never will be popular, because the world knows its own. See? And you're not of the world. When you become a Christian, you are a different person. From the world. We know that. Jesus said, I pray, Father, that they not be of the world. So you are not of the world. Maak nie saak hoe dit lyk of wat ander sê nie, die godsdienst van Jesus Christus was nog nooit gewild nie, en dit sal nooit gewild wees nie, want die wereld ken sy eie sien, en jy is nie van die wereld nie, want jy het een christen geword. Jy is een ander persoon as die wereld. Ons weet dit. Jesus het as sê, ek bid vader, dat hulle nie van die wereld sal wees nie. So jylle is nie van die wereld nie. The world, the Bible says, if you love the world, or the things of the world, the love of God not even in you. That's the scripture says that. Die wereld, die Bible het gesê, as jylle die wereld lief het op die dinge van die wereld, is die liefde van God nie eers in jylle nie. Dis die skrif sê dit. So you can't love two masters, Jesus said. You can't love... God and mammon. The word mammon, it translated, means the world. So jy kan nie twee meesters lief heen nie, het Jesus gesê. Jy kan nie God en mammon lief heen nie. Die woord mammon vertaal beteken die wereld. And he says you either serve one and hate the other, or vice versa. Jesus said that to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Can't serve the God and the world at the same time. You've got to be one or the other. En hy het gesê, jy sal of een dien of die ander haat, of andersom. Jesus het het gesê in Matthies die vijfde hoofdstuk, kan nie die God en die wereld te selfde tyd dien nie. Jy moet een of die ander wees. And God have mercy. That's what's the matter with our people today. It's all Christian in this, in this nation. They're trying to live like the world and profess to be Christian. En God wees genadig. Dis wat fout is met ons mense vandag wat Christen genoem word in hierdie, hierdie volk. Hulle probeer lewe soos die wereld en beleid om Christene te wees. And that's the reason the unbeliever outside has such a hard time to make up his mind is because he sees people that call themselves Christians live no different from the rest of the world. That's pretty flat, but that's truth. We got to face truth. En dis ook om die ongeloofige buitenkant so'n moeilike tyd het om sy besluit te neem, is omdat hy mense sien wat hulle self Christene noem, wat niks anders as die rest van die wereld lewe nie. Dis baie kree, maar dis die waarheid. Ons moet die waarheid in die oe kyk. There's probably men and women sitting here I'll never see again till I see you at the judgment. And I, I've got to be truthful and honest because I've got to face the judgment and meet my words again at the judgment. So I have to be truthful about it. Daar is waarschijnlijk mans en vrouwe wat hier sit, wat ek nooit weer sal sien voor ek jylle by die oordeel sien nie. En ek, ek moet oprecht en eerlijk wees, omdat ek die oordeel moet trotseer en weer my woorde moet ontmoet by die oordeel, so ek moet oprecht wees daaroor. Now, we notice that, that Philip, as soon as he found Nathaniel, he said, come see who I have found. And Nathaniel, being a righteous man, a good man, he said, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? 
Nou ons let op dat, dat Philippe so draai en Nathaniel gevind het, het gesê, kom kyk wie ek gevind het. En Nathaniel, wat rechtverdige man was, een goeie man, het gesê, kan daar enig iets goeds uit Nazareth kom? Nazareth is a mean, wicked city. Very bad. Outlaws, gangsters and so forth raised up and, and had outlaw bands in those days that come out of Nazareth. Very vile city. He said, could anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, come and see. Nazareth was a vrede, boze stad, baie slecht misdadigers, rampokkers en soepoort wat opgestaan het, en het misdadige bendes gehad in haar daar, wat het Nazareth gekom het, baie slechte stad. Het gesê, kan enig iets goed uit Nazareth kom? Het gesê, kom en kyk. Now we might ask today, could anything good come out of Methodist Church? Could anything good come out of Baptist Church, Presbyterian, or whatever church it may be? The first thing to do is come and see. Find out. Nou mag ons vandag vraag, kan enig iets goed uit die Mestediste kerk kom? Kan enig iets goed uit die Baptiste kerk, Pretsbeteriaans of wat er kerk dit ook al mag wees? Die eerste ding om te doen is om te kom kyk, vind uit. Now, examine it, not by uh, your ritual, not by the catechism, not by one, examine it by the word of God. Ondersoek het nou, nie met jou ritueel nie, nie met die katechisme nie, Nie met een onderzoek dit met die woord van God. For the Bible says that he that will take away or add to anything that's in this book, God will take his name out of the book of life. The Revelation 21st chapter says that he will do that, or 22nd chapter rather, of the last book of the Bible. Want die Bible het gesê dat, hy wat sal wegneem of byvoeg by, enige iets wat in die boek is, God sal sy naam in die boek van die lewe neem. Dis openbaring 21ste hoofstuk sê dat hy dit sal doen, of 22ste hoofstuk liever, van die laaste boek van die Bijbel. He said, if anybody, God himself speaking to the writer, said, if anyone shall add one word to this book, or take one word out of it, God will take his name from the book of life, and he'll be destroyed. So we must say exactly with what the scriptures has got to say. Hy het gesê, as enig iemand, God self wat met die schrijver praat, het gesê, as enig iemand een woord by hierdie boek sal voeg, of een woord daar iets sal neem, sal God sy naam uit die boek van die lewe neem, en hy sal vernietig word. So ons moet precies bly by wat die skrifte sê. Now, when he found Nathaniel, and he, he said, come see, so he followed him. Now let's watch what kind of a man Jesus was. Nou, toe hy Nathaniel gevind het, en hy, hy gesê het, kom kyk, so hy het om gevolg. Nou kom ons kyk wat er soort man Jesus was. Now, do, if we wanted to find Jesus tonight, if we went, if somebody told us Jesus Christ was in Georgetown, Indiana, what, and he was in human flesh like we are tonight, what type of a person would we want to find? Now, this may be shocking. Nou, as ons Jesus vanavond wil vind, as ons so gaan, as iemand vir ons gesê het, Jesus Christus was in Georgetown, Indiana, wat, en hy was in menselike vlees, soos wat ons is vanavond, wat er type persoon so ons wil vind? Nou, hier die mag skokkend wees. But when we come to find a man that would be dressed a little different from any other man, we wouldn't be looking for Jesus or we wouldn't find him because he dressed just like other men. There was no difference in his dress. Maar onse man kom vind wat een bykie anders aangetrek is as enig ander mans. Ons sou nie na Jesus soek het nie, of ons sou hom nie vind nie, want hy het net soos ander mans aangetrek. Daar was geen perskil in sy kleredrag nie. When we come to find man that was... Um, that was great, forceful speakers, great, forceful speakers? No, the Bible said his voice should not even be heard in the street. So ons mans kom vind wat was, wat groot luidrichtige sprekers was? Groot luidrichtige sprekers? Nee, die Bible het gesê, sy stem sal nie eers in die straat gehoor word nie. Well, we come to find a man that was a, a great boaster of his great church and so, no sir. The Bible spoke very different of him, saying he was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He wasn't a great carry-on or a gone. He was a humble man, and he was... So as a man kom vind wat a, a groot prater van sy kerk is en so, nee, meneer, die Bible het baie anders van hom gepraat gesê. Hy was a man van droefheid en bekend en met hartseer. Hy was nie a groot aangaander of a gedoente nie. Hy was a nederige man, en hy was... Uh, he does. Will we find him among the rich people? He never dwelt with the rich people. Where did they find him? You'd find him among the poor. He went down on the river and found fishermen. En hy het gelaat, so ons om onder die reikmense vind. Hy het nooit by reikmense geblei nie. 
waar het hulle hom gevind, jy so hom onder die armes vind, hy het daar die rivier toe gegaan en vissermanne gevind. Think of the great orthodox church with all the great priests and high priests and the great glamour and glory in that day and not one time did any apostle or any man of God ever visited or accepted. When God sent his son, he sent him away from it. Denk aan die groot orthodoxe kerk met al hulle groot priesters en hoë priesters en hulle groot prag en praal en daar die dag. En die een keer het enige apostel of enige man van God dit ooit besoek of dit aanvaar nie. Toe God sy sien gestuur het, het hy hom weggestuur daarvan. En hy stuur en told hem dat hy was in hypocrisy en told hem how bad they were and everything and they said that he has a devil because he don't even believe in our church. En hy het hulle streng vertel dat hulle skeen heilig was en vir hulle gesê hoe sleg hulle was en alles. En hy het het sê dat hy het duivel het omdat hy nie eers in ons kerk glo nie. See, and they were the church of the day. So you see, you can't go by church, you've got to go by God. That's where you have, and by Christ. Sien, en hulle was in die kerk van die dag. So jy hulle sien, jy kan nie die kerk volg nie, jy moet God volg. Dis waar jy het in Christus volg. Now, when the Daniel came up in the Lord, I will see what he found. He found a man standing there doing something contrary to what the church is teaching. Nou, toen Nathaniel in die pad afgekom het, nou sal ons sien wat hy gevind het. Hy het een man gevind wat daar staan, wat iets teenstrijdig doen met wat die kerk geleer het. Die kerk het geleer dat die dag van wonderwerke voorbij was, maar hier het Jesus daar gestaan bezig om te doen. Steek jylle hande op enige plek in die gebouw. Ek gee nie om waar jy is nie, steek net jou hand op, sê God, hiermee wil ek hee, jy moet my genees, God, dis recht, dis net omtrend allemaal oorhaal. I tell you what you do, I told you that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here in the form of the Spirit of God, is that right? En ek sê jylle wat jylle doen, ek het jylle gesê dat Jesus Christus, die Seen van God, hier is in die vorm van die Geest van God, is dit recht? How many Christians believe that, let's see your hand. That's fine. Then if he is here and he's the same Lord Jesus, then he's got his duty bound to do the same thing. Is that right? Hoeveel christene gloed het, laat ons jou aansien, dis goed. Dan as hy hier is en hy die selde Heere Jesus is, dan moet hy, hy is verplug om die selde ding te doen, is dit recht? Now he said he couldn't heal, the Father showed him and he did what the Father said, is that right? Nou, hy het gesê, hy kan nie genees nie, die vader het omgewees, en hy het gedoen wat die vader gesê het, is dit recht? Nou, standing in the line, I do know this first lady standing here, and I don't know now, whether I know anyone else or not. Nou, wat in die reis staan, ek ken wel hier die eerste dame wat hier staan, en ek weet nie nou of ek enige iemand anders ken of nie. I've seen that lady about second or third from the back there. I've seen her. I don't know what her name is, but I've seen her. I guess that's about the only one that, that, uh, that I know of. And um, that's about the only ones that, that I know. All right. Now let's just bow our heads a moment for prayer. Ek het daar die dame gesien omtrent tweede of derde van achter af daar. Ek het haar gesien. Ek weet nie wat haar naam is nie, maar ek het haar gesien, ek reken dis omtrend die enigste waar, waar, waarvan ek weet, en dis omtrend die enigste wat, wat ek ken goed, nou laat ons, en net ons hoofde, een oomblik buig vir gebed. Now Heavenly Father, this is the moment, now I have spoke the best of my knowledge of you, now dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll help me, thou knowest that I know nothing about these people, Nou, Hemelse Vader, hierdie is die oomblik. Ek het gesprek na die beste van my kennis van u. Nou, dierbare Heere Jesus, bid ek dat u my sal help. U weet dat ek niks van hierdie mense af weet nie. Sometimes I know who they are. I don't know their troubles. Thou know us. Partijmel ken ek hulle wie hulle is. Ek ken nie hulle probleem nie nie. U ken. You can say anything you wish. And I humble myself and submit myself to thee that the great Holy Spirit will come tonight and take this poor unworthy man for the glory of God and anoint 
Ik kan enig iets sê wat ik wil, en ik verneder mezelf en gee mezelf oor aan u, dat die groot heilige geest vanavond sal kom, en die arme, onwaardige man zal neem, door die eer van God in dit sal. And don't let me speak my own lips, but let the Holy Spirit speak, and do the works that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said that he would do through his people, through every age. I pray this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. En moet dat ek spreek, my eie lippe nie, maar laat die heilige geest spreek en die werke doen, wat Jesus Christus, die Seen van God, gesê het, wat hy so doen dier sy mense, dier elke eeuw. En ek bid hierdie Seen in Jesus Christus naam, Amen. Now, I'm going to ask you one thing. If you'll stand reverently, and be humble, don't doubt, believe with all your heart, then the Lord God of heaven will no doubt heal your body and make you well. Now, it's your faith, it's not faith, now this is it. Now, I'm going to ask you one thing. If you are standing and standing and standing and standing, don't doubt. And with your whole heart, then the Lord God of the heavens, without doubt, will your body be healed and your body be healed. Now, this is your belief. This is not seen. Now, here is it. I hear stands a lady. I, I believe I know who the woman is. I'm not sure. But, but I believe that I know who she is. And I, I, I... Is that right? Don't I know you, lady? Oh, I believe I know who you are. Nou hier staan een dame, ek reken, ek weet wie die vrou is, ek is nie seker nie, maar ek dink ek weet wie sy is en ek, 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 is dit recht? Ken ek jou nie dame? Aha, goed meneer, ek dink ek weet wie hy is, dis recht, goed, nou as jy net een oomblik hier naartoe sal kom. Nou, as knowing your name, not knowing your, is your name set up or something like that? No, my sister's name. Oh, that's your sister. You were, I, I believe, didn't I know you when I used to work for the public service yeah. company or something? That's right, I'd seen your face somewhere. No, and dear, your name to Kenny, you need to Kenny. Is your name set up of so it? We are the your sister, you was, think I, I, had it you never known to act not for the openbare work, maatschappij gewerk het, of iets nie? That's right. I had your face ever's gezien. Um, I, I know, I thought your name is Sarah, but Sarah is your sister, is that right? And your name is Wilson, yes, sir. Well, I'm glad to see you again, sister. Now the Lord bless you. Ek, ek het dit geweet, en ek het gedink, jou naam was Sedef, maar Sedef is jou sister, is het recht, en jou naam was Wilson. Wel, ek is blij om jou weer te sien, sister, die Heere sien jou nou. Now, I, as your brother in Christ, you know that I don't know what you're here for, do I? I, I, no. I don't know, no ma'am, it's a, it's a mystery to me, that I do not know. Nou, ek, as jou broer in Christus, jy weet dat ek nie weet, Waarvoor jy hier is nie, weet ek? Ek, ek, ek weet nie, nie mevrou, dis a, dis a geheim vir my wat ek nie weet nie. Now if the Lord Jesus will let me know what you are here for, and what you want of him, if he will make himself so positive that and he will declare what you want, then will you accept it as coming from him? Yes. You will, all right. Nou as die Heere Jesus vir my sal laat weet, waarvoor jy hier is en wat jy van hom verlang, as jy hom self so duidelik sal maak dat, dat hy sal verklaar wat jy wil hee, sal jy dit aanvaar dat dit van hom afkom? Jy sal goed. Now the audience is catching her voice, and you see the recorder is going that way. Now you watch. Now if he speaks anything to tell this woman what she's here for, would not it be the same spirit that spoke to the woman at the well, that know where her trouble was? Would that be right? Hmm? Now, that, that her faith in what is being done will determine her healing. Now, the gehoor, hoor haar stem, en jylle sien die opnemers wat aan is, dis hoe dit is, nou hou jylle dop. Nou, as jy enig iets sê om hierdie vrou te vertel waarvoor sy hier is, sou dit nie die selfde geest wees wat met die vrou by die put gepraat het, wat geweet het waar haar probleem was nie? Sou dit recht wees, sien? Nou, dit, Haar geloof en wat gedoen word, sal dan haar geneesing bepaal. Now to you in the audience, that doesn't have prayer card, believes with all your heart that Jesus Christ is here to heal you. If you believe with all your heart, you won't have to be in this prayer line. You certainly won't. The only thing you'll have to do is have faith in God. Nou aan jylle in die gehoor wat nie gebedskaart het nie, glo met jylle jylle hart dat Jesus Christus hier is, om jylle te genees as jylle met jylle jylle hart sal glo, sal jylle nie in hierdie gebedsrij hoef te wees nie. 
jylle sal beslis nie. Die enigste ding wat jylle moet doen, is om geloof in God te hee. Now I would ask you, being that there is epilepsy present, and anybody who's been in the meetings knows what epilepsy does, it sometimes carries on. So now, just be reverent, just sit still, no matter what takes place, you sit still. And just believe in the Lord Jesus, and pray, ask the Heavenly Father to be kind. Nou wil ek jylle vraag sien, dat daar epilepsie teenwoordig is. En enig iemand wat in die dienste was, weet wat epilepsie doen, dit gaan partijmal aan. So nou, wees net eerbiedig, sit net stil, maak die saak wat gebeur nie, sit jylle stil sien, en glo net in die Heere Jesus en bid, vra die Himmelse Vader om barmhartig te wees. But now, if you are an unbeliever, I would not stay, see. So now, uh, this is not plain church, this is facts, we're facing things. Maar nou, as jy ongelovig is, so ek nie bly nie sien. So nou, hier is nie kerkspeel, hier is feite, ons trotseer dinge. But I just only had a few moments longer, or another night, that I could explain to you what these things are, that you could see what they really are by scriptural terms, they give medical names for what they really are in the sight of the Bible. As ek net nog a paar minute langer gehad het, of nog a aand, dat ek vir julle kon verduidelik wat hierdie dinge is, dat julle kon sien wat hulle rechtig is in skriftierlijke terme, hulle het medische name gegee, maar wat hulle rechtig is volgens die Bijbel. Now, the sister here is standing before me. Now, it's not a telepathy, no sir. I feel, feel you're not, you, you couldn't hide your life now if you had to. See, his spirit is here now. Nou, die sister staan hier voor my, nou, dis nie te lepet in die nie, meneer, ek voel dit, ek voel dit, jy, nou, jy, jy kan nie jou lewe wegsteek, as jy moes nie sien, sy gees is nou hier. How many ever seen the picture of it, where you took it, it's in Washington, D.C., the only supernatural beam with ever photograph can be proved in the world. Hoeveel het al ooit die foto daarvan gesien, waar hulle dit afgeneem het? En dis in Washington, D.C., die enigste boonatierlijke wees, wat ooit gefotografeer is, bewys kan word in die wereld. They have fiction stories of men in a bush and all like that, but it's always proved out wrong, see. But they took this, and many of you here was present when it was taken. Hulle het fiktieve stories van mans in a bos en al sylke dinge, maar dit word altyd as verkeerd bewys sien. Maar hulle het hierdie geneem, en baie van julle hier was teenwoordig toe dit afgeneem is. A few weeks ago, the German camera took it in Germany three different times. And it's that that you see in the picture, is right here now at the platform. It's exactly right. Baar weke gelede het die Duitse kamera dit afgeneem in Duitsland drie verskillende tye, en dis daarie wat jylle in die foto sien, dis net hier by die platform nou, precies recht. Now be reverent, don't move around, keep your children near you, and be in prayer, and see what the Holy Spirit will do for us tonight. Nou wees eerbiedig, moet nie rondbeweeg nie, hou jylle kinders nabi aan jylle, en wees in gebed, en kyk wat die Heilige Geest vir ons sal doen vanavond. And, if, and I pray that God will bless you, and sometime on earth we'll meet again. Pray for me as we go into the fields after this service, into the fields out yonder in the big meetings, to pray for the sake. En as, en ek bid dat God jylle sal sien in een of ander tyd op aarde, ons weer sal en moet bid vir my, soos ons in die velde ingaan na hierdie dienst, en die velde daar oor kan in die groot dienste om te bid vir die siekes. Be reverent everyone, please, because we're in the presence of the Almighty God. The Holy Spirit, which is now near. En wees allemaal eerbiedig asseblief, want ons is in die neemwoordigheid van die Almachtige God, die Heilige Gees wat nou nabe is. Mrs. Uh, what was your name now? Wilson? Cobb. Mrs. Cobb. Mrs. Cobb, if, uh, if the Holy Spirit is present now, He will make known to me something of your life that might give you encouragement to bring you up to a place that lets you believe in the Lord Jesus for your healing, or I don't know what you're here for. It may be financial troubles, it may be domestic, I do not know, but he knows, doesn't he? Mevrouw, wat was jou naam nou? Wilson. Kop, mevrouw, kop, mevrouw, kop. As, as die heilige geest nou teenvoerig is, sal hy iets van jou leven aan my bekend maak, wat jou sal aanmoedig om jou te bring by a punt om jou en die Heere Jesus te laat glo vir jou geneesing. Of ek weet nie waarvoor jy hier is nie. Dit mag financiële probleme wees, dit mag huiselik wees, ek weet nie. Maar hy weet, weet hy nie? I see the one thing that you're here for is because you're suffering with a nervous condition. You're very nervous, upset. Another thing, you have a, an asthmatic cough that's bothering you. Isn't that right? Yes. 
That's right. All right. Ek sien die een ding waar vir jy hier is, is omdat jy leie aan een senewe toestand. Jy is baie senewe achtig ontsteld. Nog iets, jy het een asmatiese hoes wat jou pla, is dit nie recht nie? Dis recht goed. How do you believe that everything is all right with you now? You are healed now. You can go home. Jesus Christ, your faith has made you well. Praise you go and be in prayer. Nou gloe jy dat alles nou recht is met jou? Jy is nou genees, jy kan huis toe gaan. Jesus Christus, jou geloof, het jou gezond gemaakt. Gaan jy en bly in gebed. Kind Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless this our dear sister and ask that you be kind to her. In Jesus' name, Amen. Barmhartige Hemelse Vader, in die naam van die Heere Jesus Christus, sien ons hier die ons dierbare sister en vraag dat jy haar barmhartig sal wees. In Jesus naam, Amen. Come, sir. How do you do, sir? Do you believe that in the Lord Jesus Christ being the Son of the living God? Do you believe that He is sure to make you well? You know that He is sure to make you well. Kom, meneer, aangename kennis, meneer. Gloe jy in die Heere Jesus Christus as die Seen van die levende God? Gloe jy dat hy hier is om jou gezond te maak? Aha, jy glo. Jy weet dat hy hier is om jou gezond te maak? Was that the lady you just prayed for? Was you the lady there? Uh-huh. You got trouble with your side sitting there by her, don't you, sir? You believe that God can make you well and heal you? Was dit die dame wat pas voor gebid het? Was jy die dame daar? Uh-huh. Jy het probleem met jou sy wat daar langs haar sit. Het jy nie, meneer? Gloe jy dat God jou kan gezond maak en jou genees? When she passed by you just then, you had a strange feeling, didn't you? That was the Holy Spirit. She had trouble with your side. Now, it's gone from you now, sir. Your faith has healed you. Is that right? Raise your hand. That's right. That's right. All right, sir. Toe sy net toe by jou voorbij gegaan het, het jy een vreemde gevoel gehad, het jy nie? Dit was die heilige geest, jy het probleem met jou sy gehad. Nou, dis nou weg van jou af, meneer, jou geloof in jou genees, is dit recht? Steek jou hand op, dis recht, dis recht, goed, meneer. I don't know the man, I've never seen him in my life. But Jesus Christ has healed him just the same as his faith touched the Lord Jesus in days gone by, the woman with the blood issue, so did the man's faith touch just then. Ek ken nie die man, ek het hom nog nooit in my leven gesien nie, maar Jesus Christus het hom genees. Net soos sy het, geloof die Heere Jesus aangeraak het in die vergange daar, die vrou met die bloed vloeien, so het die man sy geloof net toe aangeraak. You don't have to. What do you think, little lady, stand there in the prayer line with the coat over your shoulder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. God bless you. Jy hoef nie, wat dink jy, damekie, wat daar in die gebedsrui staan, met die jas oor jou skouwer. Aha, ja. God sê nou. Oh, die behind you there with your hand up like this. Mm-hmm. You'd like to have an operation, wouldn't you? You think that tumor, God could take it from you without an operation? You believe God would heal you? You have tumor, don't you? And Yes, right. Die dame achter jou daar met haar hand op soos hierdie. Aha. Jy sal graag uit die operatie wil uitkom nie waar nie. Jy dink, daar die gewas... God dit vir jou kan wegneem sonder operatie. Gloeie God sal jou genees. Jy het gewas nie waar nie, is dit reg? You believe that God will heal you without an operation? You do? Will you accept Jesus right now as your healer? You will? Gloeie God sal jou genees sonder operatie, gloeie. Sal jy Jesus net nou aanvaar as jou genees, sal jy? Kind Heavenly Father, the woman's face struck up here and I saw the vision before and the doctor rolling out that place for her operation. I pray, Heavenly Father, that in Jesus Christ's name that you'll heal the woman without an operation for your glory. Amen. Baramhartige Himmelse Vader, die vrouwse gesig het hier verskyn, ek het die visioen vir haar gesien en die dokter wat haar die plek uitgerol het vir haar operatie. Ek bid, Himmelse Vader, dat in Jesus Christus naam, dat u die vrou sal genees sonder operatie tot u eer. Amen. You take your seat now. You won't have to come in the prayer line. Your faith heals you. God bless you. You believe the Lord Jesus? If you can believe, all things are possible.
Jy kan nou jou sitplek inneem, jy hoef nie in die gebedsreid te kom, jy geloof, genees jou, God sien jou. Glo jylle die Heere Jesus, as jylle kan glo, is alle dinge moendlik. Lady saying you broke your arm, got your arm hurt there, hadn't you, lady? Mm-hmm. You're from Carden, aren't you? Got someone with you, come along, didn't you? She's suffering with a nervous condition, isn't that right? If it is, raise up your hand. <laughs> All right, now you can walk out and go back, be healed too, lady, eh? amen. <laughs> Dame wat staan hier, het jou arm gebrek, jou arm seer gemaakt, daar het jy die dame, aha, uh-huh. jy is van corridor nie waar nie, het iemand saam met jou wat saamgekom het, het hulle nie, sy lei aan een senewe toestand, is dit nie recht nie, as dit is, steek jou hand op, goed, nou kan jy ook uitstap en terug gaan, genees word dame, amen. It's your faith, it is that, now that's what I'm speaking of, the Holy Spirit. Sir, would you believe your heart trouble unless you and you go be well? Yeah, you do? Yeah. All right, sir, then you can leave. Amen. Let us say praise be to God, all of us three. Dis jylle geloof, dit is, daarie, nou, dis waarvan ek praat die heilige geest, meneer, sal jy glo jou hart probleem met jou verlaat en jy so gezond wees, jy glo? Goed, meneer, dan kan jy gaan, amen. Laat ons sê, praise God. Kom, ons bid allemaal saam. A lady coming, how do you do? To suppose we're strangers to each other, are we, lady? I never seen you in my life. I'm perfect stranger to you. Just like the, our master who stood at the well and talked to the woman and said, she said, he said, bring me a drink. He wanted to catch a conversation with her. Die dame wat kom aangename kennis, ek neem aan, ons as vreemdelinge vir mekaar is ons nie, dame. Ek het jou nog nooit in my leven gesien nie, ek is totale vreemdelinge vir jou. Net soos die ons meester wat by die put gestaan en gepraat het met die vrou. En gesê, sy het gesê, hy het gesê, bring vir my water om te drink. Hy wil gesprek met haar aanknoop. Now this being our first time to ever meet in life, it's a man and a woman again, isn't that right? Well then, if Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, and he promised that he would be with us, in us, to the end of the world, and we'd do the same things that he did, it'd have to be the same kind of thing. Nou, omdat hier ons eerste ontmoeting ooit in die lewe is, dis weer een man en een vrou nie waar nie. Wel dan, as Jesus Christus opgestaan het uit die dood, en hy beloof dat hy met ons in ons so wees tot aan die einde van die wereld, en ons die selfde dinge so doen wat hy het, so dat die selfde soort ding moes wees. Then if Jesus stood here, and he is wearing this suit that he gave me, the only thing he could do is far if you're sick and need healing, he would tell you, I did that at Calvary, child. Would you believe it? Now, dan as Jesus hier gestaan het, en hy hier die pak gedra het, wat hy vir my gegeet, was die enigste ding wat hy kon doen, so ver, as hy syk is en geneesing nodig het, so hy vir jou sê, ek het dit op Golgotha gedoen, kind, sal jy dit nou glo? But now he could tell you something, maybe is wrong with you, something a reason you don't get healed, but me being a stranger to you, it's just be the same, isn't that right? Maar nou, hy kon u iets vertel, wat miskien verkeerd is met jou of iets, Die rede waarom jy nie genees word nie, maar ek as een vreemdeling vir jou, sal dit net die selde wees, is dit nie recht nie? Hey everyone, real reverend now, remember you're in the presence of the Lord. In the very gospel that I've read to you tonight, you see it living anew. Nou elkeen baie eerbiedig nou onthou, jylle is in die teenwoordige van die Heere in die eindste evangelie wat ek vir jylle gelees het vanavond, jylle sien dit op niet lewe sien. I have never seen the woman. I don't know nothing about her. Never seen her in my life. God knows her. I don't. But I, I would speak to her to contact her soul. Ek het nog nooit die vrou gesien nie. Ek weet niks van haar af nie. Haar nog nooit in my leven gesien nie. God ken haar. Ek nie. Maar nou sal ek met haar praat om contact te maak met haar siel. The anointing that's here with me now is that angel of the Lord, the pillar of fire, follow the children of Israel, which was Christ in spirit form, came down as made flesh, went back to the Father, came back again to live in his church. The same thing. Not me, it's him. The salve wat nou hier by my is, is daar die engel van die Heere, die vier kolom, wat die kinders van Israel gevolg het, wat Christus in geestvorm was, wat afgekom het, vlees geword het, teruggegaan het na die Vader, weer teruggekom het, om in sy kerk te woon, die selde ding, nie, ek nie, dis hy. I don't know the woman, know nothing of her, got a 7th grade education. Look at the people who say, well, out there in the audience, they're be, being healed, they're sitting in the audience, standing wherever they may, God's here to heal, that's all, if you can believe. 
Ik ken die vrouw niet, weet niks van haar af niet, het een graad 7 geleerd het. Kijk naar die mensen en zei, wel, daar buiten in die gehoor word, word hulle genees. Net dier in die gehoor te sit, staan waar hulle ook al mag, God is hier om te genees, dis al, as jylle kan geloof. I see a child that's suffering, but I can't say it's healed, I don't know yet. If you'll keep praying, mother, believing with all your heart. Ik zie een kind wat lei, maar ik kan niet zeggen dat is genees niet. Ik weet nog niet als je zal aan op het moeder om te gloeien met je hele hart. Now to you again, sister, to speak with you. Now there's been a hunger in your heart for a long time. Nou weer aan je sister om met je te praat. Nou daar was een honger in je hart voor een lang tijd. That hunger is a closer life with God. You've tried that much. Try and fail, try and fail. Isn't that right? Ups and downs in life. Daar die honger is vir een nader wandel met God. Jy het soveel probeer, probeer en misluk, probeer en misluk, is dit nie recht nie? Aha, hoogte en laagte punte van die lewe. Here some time ago you were praying somewhere because you were facing a serious thing like an operation or something. Yes it is, I see it a doctor, he's examined, uh, you have something on, it's your leg. It's on your right leg is a trouble that you're going to be operated on. Hier het tyd gelede het die iwers gebid omdat jy voor een ernstige ding gestaan het soos een operasie of iets. Ja, dit is, ek sien dit, een dokter, hy het onderzoek, jy het iets op, dis jou been, dis op jou rechterbeen is die probleem waarop daar geopereer gaan word. You made a promise that God would let you get well, that you'd serve him and walk a closer life. I am not reading your mind. That's true, isn't it? If, it, you, if that's true, raise your hand. Jy het een belofte gemaakt, as God jou sal het gezond word, dat jy hom so dien in een nader lewe so lei. Ek lees nie jou gedag nie, dis waar is dit nie. Ja, meneer, jy is jy, as dit waar is, steek jou hand op. Now, there's something here that you know. I want to ask you something. In the presence where we're standing now, and so the audience might know, there's a feeling that you have now that you've never had before in your life. I can't explain to nobody. Nou, daar is iets hier wat jy weet. Ek wil jy iets vraag. In die teenwoordigheid waar ons nou staan en so dat jy gehoor kan weet, is daar een gevoel wat jy nou het, wat jy nog nooit van tevore in jou leven gehad het nie. That's right. It's because that light, the Holy Spirit, is between you and I, and you just go back, even to a little you know, girl. I was standing in the line. I felt like I just, I could feel a feeling I can't explain. To They're feeling about. the same thing right along the line there now, see? Here it's in the presence of something that the world doesn't know. Come here that I might ask God to bless you, sister. Dis reg, dis omdat daar die licht, die heilig geest is in my en jou is, en jy gaan het terug selfs tot by a klein dochterkie. Hulle voel nou die selde ding, recht daar in die rij afsien. Hier, dis die teenwoordigheid van iets wat die wereld nie ken nie, kom hier, dat ek God kan vraag om jou te sien, sister. All of you do believe with all your heart now? Do you, are you believing if you do say, Amen? Almal van jylle nou gloe, jylle nou met jylle jylle hart, jylle gloe, gloe jylle, as jylle gloe, sê, Amen. Kind Heavenly Father, this our dear sister stands here in need, all things work together for good to them who love you. And she's standing needy, and she wants to be well, and this is the time. Barmhartige Himmelse Vader, hierdie ons dierbare sister staan hier behoeftig, alle dinge werkt en goede meer vir hulle wat jy lief het. En sy staan hier behoeftig, en sy wil gezond wees, en hierdie is die tyd. I pray that just this moment, Father, that you will take away all of her infirmities, Cleanse her from everything that's not like you. Ek bid uh, dat net op hierdie oomblik, Vader, dat jy al haar swakjede sal wegneem. Al sal reinig van alles wat nie soos jy is nie. And I ask, dear God, that you will forgive her of every sin and trespass and take her into your kingdom tonight as a newborn babe and heal her body. Through Jesus Christ's name, thy beloved Son, I ask it. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go rejoicing and happy. God being with you.
en ek vraag dierbare God dat jy haar sal vergewe van elke zonde en oortredinge, en haar in die koninkryk sal inneem vanavond as een pasgebore baba en haar lichaam sal genees. Deer Jesus Christus naam, ek geliefde sien vraag dit, Amen. God sien jou sister, gaan verheeg en gelukkig, God wat met jou is. How do you do, ladies? I suppose we are strangers to each other too. We are not knowing each other. But if, if Jesus has risen from the dead, as I say that he has, and I believe that he has, and he be standing here with us, you and I. Aangename kennis, dame, ek veronderstel dat ons ook vreemdeling is vir mekaar. Ons ken mekaar nie. Maar as, as Jesus opgestaan het in die dood, soos wat ek sê het, en glo dat hy het, en hy hier by ons sou staan, ek en jy, then me talking to you like he did the woman at the well. And he's able, and by his word, he promised that he would reveal these things, and we'd do the same things he did, because he would be, he said, I'll be with you, in you, to the end of the world. Dan ek wat met jou praat, soos hy met die vrou by die put, en hy is in staat en deur sy woord, het hy beloof dat hy hier die dinge so openbaar, en ons die selde dinge so doen wat hy het, want hy sou wees, hy het gesê, ek sal met julle wees in julle, tot aan die einde van die wereld. Now don't be shook up because you feel a little strange, but a glorious feeling, but you're just not, that's not your brother, that's him, your, your Lord, not me, him. No moet nie ontsteld wees, omdat jy een bykie snaakse, maar wonderlijke gevoel voel nie. Maar hy is net nie, dis nie jou broer nie, dis hy jou, jou, jou jyre, nie ek nie hy. Now, the lady is a stranger. Be real reverent, people. Real reverent, please. I don't know her. God does know her. No, dame is a vreemdelinge. Wees baie eerbiedig, mense. Baie eerbiedig, as a blief sien. Ek ken haar nie. God ken haar wel. I don't know the people. But you'll know that there's something here. That's a doing the work of the Lord according to the way the Bible said it would be. Is you believe that now? See? Well, what is it? It's the Lord Jesus. I can't hear the mensen, but you all know that there is something here is what the work of the Lord does according to the Bible has said it so is. As you all have now seen, well, what is it? This the Lord Jesus seen. Now I just want to speak to her again because I. I see the woman now as she moves from me. Yes, the woman's very much tore up about, oh, she's had a nervous breakdown. Been very bad and had a breakdown. You're still suffering from it. That's the truth, isn't it? If it's the truth, raise your hand. No, will I not weer met haar praat, man, ek sien nou die vrou waar sy wegbeweeg van my af. Ja, die vrou is baie ontstel daar oor. Oor sê, het is sene wie instorten gehad, was baie erg, het hy in een storting gehad. Jy leid steeds daaraan, dis die waarheid, nie waar nie. As dit waarheid is, steek jou hand op. You've had real funny feelings goes through you all the time, and especially a real late of an evening, you get real strange feelings. Isn't that right? Then you'll see you sitting down in a chair, kind of the late of the evening too, you get tired, you can't do your work. Isn't that right? Jy het baie vreemde gevoelens gehad, wat die heel tyd dier jou gaan. En vooral baie laat in die aand kree jy baie vreemde gevoel, is dit nie recht nie? Dan sien ek jou gaan sit in die stoel soort van laat in die aand ook. Jy word moeg, jy kan nie jou werk doen nie en dit is nie recht nie. Cause is even stomach condition in you like acids and things. When you drink coffee or something on that ride, you belch up acids out of your stomach and so forth. Veroorzaak selfs een maagtoestand in jou so daar die sier en dinge wanneer ek koffie drink of so iets van die aard. Jy bring sire op uit jou maag en so voort. That's why I see you moving away from the table where there's stuff like that on, by a window, near a window. Is that true? Raise your hand if that's true. Dis recht, ek sien jou wegbeweeg van die tafel waar daar sikkel goed op is, by jou venster, na by jou venster, en dit waar steek op jou hand as dit waar is. How something here knows your life, isn't it? I've told you how the Bible that Jesus Christ did the same thing and promised that we'd do the same thing. Do you believe that it's him? Yes. Nou, iets hier ken jou leven nie waar nie. Ek het jou vertel in die Bijbel dat Jesus Christus die selde ding gedoen het en beloof het dat ons die selde ding so doen. Gloe jy dat het hy is? I see a real dark shadow following you too, which is the devil. 
and he's almost tempted you to suicide sometimes, telling you that you'd, you'd cross a separating line, that you was not never going to be saved. Is that right? Uh, is that... Ek sien een baie donker skade wie wat jou volg ook wat de duivel is, en hy het jou amper verleid tot selfmoord op een keer. Jou vertel dat jy het, jy het die skeidslijn oorgesteed, dat jy nooit gered sou word nie. Is dit recht? Is dit? Do you believe out in the audience now with all your heart? See? It's perfect, it's true, it's the Lord Jesus. I don't know your opinion. I know some of you are wondering, because you can't hide your life now. See? Gloe jy daar buiten nie gehoor nou met jylle laar, sien, dis volmaak, dis waar, dis die Heere Jesus, ek ken nie jylle opinie nie, ek weet partij van jylle wonder, want jy kan nie nou jou lewe wegsteek nie, sien. You know, I couldn't do nothing for you, but you couldn't, you couldn't hide your life if you had to right now, you're in the presence of Him. Jylle weet, ek kan niks vir jylle doen nie, maar jy kan nie, jy kan jou lewe wegsteek as jy moes, net nou nie, jy is in die tenwoordigheid van Him. Now, sister, if I can, by the grace of God, can make it leave you now, and if you've been wandering for a time of relief anyhow, now he'll do it if you'll believe him. Will you believe him? I'll have the prayer. You believe him? No, sister, as I can, dear, the genade of God, that you now can let verlaat, and as you have gewonnen for a time of verlichting, in elk geval. No, he shall do it do, as you shall glow. Shall you glow? I shall do the do. Glow you him? Now look, you probably never was any closer in your life than you are now. Now, so that the audience can know, and your friends, where you're standing now, a real, humble, sweet feeling is around you. Isn't that right? Like something near, not your brother, but something supernatural. If that's right, raise your hand. See? Now, kijk, jij was waarschijnlijk nog nooit nader in jou leven as wat jy nou is nie. Nou, so dat die gehoor sal weet, en jou vriend, Waar jy nou staan, is a baie nederige, liefdevolle gevoel rondom jou. Is dit nie recht nie? So is iets nabij. Nie jou broer nie, maar iets boon natuurlijk. As dit recht is, steek jou hand opsien. It's the angel of the Lord. See, I am living now in another dimension, see, in a spirit world. Now, I want to pray for you while this anoint. Dis die engel van die Heere sien, ek lewe nou in a ander dimensie sien, in a geeswereld. Nou wil ek vir jou bid, tydens hierdie salwing. Now the very thing that you knows your life, I see, go way back to a little girl, I see you as a little girl. You were running from something. No, the first thing that here is, that you live in, I see that far to look at a little daughter. I see you as a little daughter, you had to get out of something. It was something chasing you, it was a dog, it seemed like it was coming from school or something, way long ago. Scared you. You've been nervous like all your life. That is true, isn't it? See? See, just more I talk to you, more vision will show. Now, for the sake of these others, let us pray. Dit, dit was iets wat jou gejaag het. Dit was een hond. Jy het blijkbaar van die school afgekom, iets baie geleerde, jou bang gemaakt. Jy was soort van jou hele leven lang senuweachtig gewees. Dis waar is dit nie sien. Hulle net meer Ek met jou praat, meer sal die visioen wees. Nou vir hierdie anderse onthaal wil, laat ons bid. Dear God, author of life, Lord Jesus, who will judge us all at your coming, knowing that we are eternity bound people and will have to meet you someday, standing here in your presence and knowing it right now, here at the platform, is the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and confirming every word Dierbare God, o teer van die lewe Heere Jesus, wat ons almal sal oordeel by u komst in die wete dat ons mense is wat vir die eeuwigheid bestem is, en die eendag sal moet ontmoet, om hier in die teenwoordigheid te staan om te weet, dat daar net nou hier op hierdie platform die gees is, wat Jesus Christus in die dood opgewek het in elke woord bevestig. Vader, Thou art so lovely because you, you make manifest those things that are true. You speak of truth. And the lady stands here, which she is tormented by an evil spirit that's trying to get her to commit suicide and do things wrong. Father, I is so prachtig, want I, I manifesteer haar die dinge wat waar is. I praat die waarheid, en die dame staan hier wat sy geteister word, dier een bose geest wat haar so ver probeer kry om selfmoord te preeg en verkeerde dinge te doen. But thou art here to remove this, Father. 
And I pray according to thy word, which said, You ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And I know that your word is true. Maar eers hier, omdat te verweide vader, en ek bid volgens die woord wat gesê het, Jylle die vader enig iets in my naam vraag, sal ek dit doen, en ek weet dat die woord waar is. So Satan, you evil one that's tormented our sister, I assure thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God, come out from the woman. So Satan, you bose een wat ons sister geteister het, ek beveel jou in die naam van Jesus Christus, die levende God, kom uit die vrou uit. Now look at this way. Now something has happened to you. You're weeping, you don't feel like you did, do you? Nou kyk hier na toe, iets het nou met jou gebeur, jy heil. Jy voel nie soos jy het nie voel nie. You feel happy now, feel good. Is that right? Raise up your hand here to people. So, you go, believe you're going to be well and go home and serve the Lord? All right, now run along, just be real happy. It won't come to you no more. Let us say thanks be to God as we thank you. Jy voel nog gelukkig, voel goed, is dit recht? Steek jou hand hier op voor die mense so, en hy gaan gloe, hy gaan gezond word, en hy is toe gaan in die Heere dien. Goed, nou gaan maar, wees net baie gelukkig, dit sal nie meer na jou toe kom nie. Kom ons sê, dankie God, soos ons sien. Art, would you come? Such a being a stranger to you, that the people might not think now, if you know what a telepathy is, that's what's on somebody's mind, I can't pick it out, and when it does, I'm going to call who you are. So, you're in there, I keep coming to the platform to me. Now, I think it's the clergyman, because I've seen the platform before me. Goed sal jy kom, sister, as a vreemdling vir jou, dat die mens in die nou sal dink dat, weet jy wat het telepathy is? Dis wat in iemand sy gedachte is, ek kan dit nie uitken nie, en wanneer dit kan, gaan ek dit sê wie jy is, so jy is hier binnen, dit bly by die platform te kom na my toe. En ek dink dis die kerkmanne, want ek sien die platforme voor my. I always want you to put your hand on mine, sister, as a way of contact. I don't know you, I've never seen you, and I'm not looking at you. I look out here into the audience. Ek wil net hee, jy moet jou hand op myne plaas, sister, as a manier om contact te maak. Ek ken jou nie. Ek het jou nog nooit gesien nie, en ek kyk nie na jou nie. Ek kyk hier buite na die gehoor. If Almighty God will reveal to me by vision as I look this way, that your trouble is, would you admit and tell the truth whether it is right or not, if you will, raise up your hand. As almachtige God in my sal openbaar die revisioen soos ek hier kan toe kyk wat jou probleem is, sal jy herken en die waarheid vertel of dit reg is of nie, as jy sal steek jou hand op. Now may the Lord Jesus grant it as I pray. If you lay your hand back on mine, just the way that a point of contact, the Bible said laying hands on the sick. Nou mag die Heere Jesus dit skenk terwijl ek bid, as jy jou hand weer op myne sal le, net so as die contactpunt, Die Bijbel het gesê, hande op die siekes te le. Yes, sister, you have a female trouble, it's a lady's trouble, if that's right, raise up your hand. How do you believe it's mental telepathy? Ja, sister, jy het een vrou probleem, dis een dames probleem, as dit reg is, steek jou hand op. Gloe jy nou, dis een verstands telepathy? That takes place, she was in a bathroom, but she wouldn't be, if I had to tell a mixed audience like this, the lady knows what is a drainage. That's right, isn't it, lady? That's right. It's true. Dit van plaas, hy was in die badkamer, wat dit so nie recht wees om een gemengde hoor soos hierdie te vertel nie. Die dame weet wat dit is, dis a drainering, dis recht. Is dit die dame, dis recht, sien, dis waar. Now only God can heal her, I can heal her. Certainly not. I'm not a healer, I'm his servant. Just the best of where the Holy Spirit comes. Like this right here, this is a speaker. This is not a speaker, this is a flat, a pulpit. Nou net God kan haar genees, ek kan haar nie genees nie beslis nie, ek is nie een geneeser nie, ek sy dienstknig, net een werktuig waar die heilig geest kom, so dit net hier, hier is een leidspreek, hier is nie een leidspreek nie, hier is een plat, een preekstoel. This is a speaker, some man made this a speaker, some man made this a prophet, some man made you a preacher, some, I mean the Lord, I don't mean, excuse me my brothers, I don't mean some man made you a preacher. Hier is een leidspreker, een mens het hierdie een leidspreker gemaakt, een mens het hierdie een preekstoel gemaakt, mens het jou predik gemaakt, ek, ek bedoel die heren, ek bedoel nie verskoon met my broer, ek bedoel nie een mens het jou predik gemaakt nie. I didn't mean that in that mean, that matter I was saying man, and this is a kind of, you're, you're working in two worlds, you're here in another world, when that goes out, then you go in and you see what's standing here at the platform here, angels of God and everything. 
Ek het dit nie bedoel op daarie gemene, daarie manier nie. Ek is een mens, en hierdie is jy, jy wat soort van in twee werelde werk. Jy is hier in een ander wereld, wanneer het uitgaan, dan gaan jy in en jy sien wat hier staan by die platform hier. Engele van God en alles. And you see hideous things that take place, then you're, you're wondering sometimes. That's the reason I said, when God called you and made you a minister, God called me and made me a seer. As he promised in the Bible. En hy sien vreselike ding wat plaas, want dan wonder jy, jy per tuimel, dis waarom ek gesê het, toe God jou geroep het, en jou prediker gemaakt het, hy my geroep en my a siener gemaakt, soos hy in die Bijbel beloof het. The Bible said, you're in the Bible said, in the, in the actual second chapter, in the last days, that's these days, it'll come to pass that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your young men shall see vision. Is that right? Prophesy, is that right? The Bible has said, yes, the Bible has said, by the, the in the last day, this, here, it will happen, and the young man will see visions, is that right? Prophetier, is that right? Prophets will have raised in the last days and show visions and signs. Is that what the Bible says? Well, it's just what he said. Profete sal dit oprig in die laaste dag en visioene en tekens toon. Is dit wat die Bijbel gesê het? Wel, dit is net wat hy gesê het. Now, sister, go believe me. Have in faith. Believe with all your heart and God will heal you. Do you believe it? Kind Heavenly Father, in the name of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus, knowing that this woman is near the line of the shadow right behind her, call cancer. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will grant her healing tonight. Nou, sister, gaan gelovig met geloof. Glo met jou hele hart en God sal jou genees. Glo jy dit, baramhartige hemelse vader in die naam van die geliefde sien, die Jezus en die weet dat hierdie vrou na by die licht is en die skade weer recht achter haar, namelijk kanker en ons bid, hemelse vader, dat jy haar geneesing sal skenk vanavond. And I condemn this enemy upon the confession of her faith and the word of the Lord God. I condemn this devil at bothering her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go happy, sister. Don't be bothered. Just believe with all your heart. En ek veroordeel hierdie vijand volgens die beleidnis van haar geloof en die woord van die Heere God. Ek veroordeel hierdie duivel wat haar pla in die naam van Jesus Christus. Amen. Gaan gelukkig, sister. Moe nie gepla wees nie. Glo net met jou hele hart. You want to be healed, do you, sister? Would you do? Would you believe me as this prophet? If I would tell you where your trouble is, and what's wrong with you, and what to do, would you believe it? You would. Wil jy genees word, wil jy sister? Sal jy doen, sal jy my glo as sy profeet? As ek vir jou sê, waar jou probleem is, en wat verkeerd is met jou, en wat om te doen, sal jy dit glo, jy sal. You have to know that some way it comes, that you're back, isn't it? That's right. How you believe that God will make you well? Jy so moes weet, dat dit op een manier moes kom. Dis in jou rug nie waar nie, ja, dis recht. Gloe jy nou, dat God jou sal gesoort maak? You're all nervous too, and got complications of things, and a lot of things you believe you have, that you don't, because it's your nerves, you see, it does that. Jy is baie senuweachtig ook, en het complicaties en dinge, en baie dinge wat jy gloe jy het, wat jy nie het nie, omdat dit jou senuwees is, sien, dit doen dit. Sometimes when you lay down, you feel like your heart's bad, but that's not nothing but just your stomach is a little peptic ulcer in your stomach which causes gas press up on your heart. It's not going to hurt you. You're going to be well. You're a fine woman. Your faith is healed you. You believe me? Then go on your road rejoicing and thanking God. Let's say thanks be to God, everybody. Maar te man, wanneer jy gaan le, voel jy asof jou hart slecht is. Maar dis niks behalwe net jou maag nie. Dis a klein maagsweer in jou maag wat veroorzaak dat gas op jou hart druk. Dit gaan jou nie seer maag nie. Jy gaan gezond wees, jy is een goeie vrou, jy geloof het jou genees, gloe jy my, gaan dan op jou pad, bly moedig en dank God, kom en sê, dank jy God, almal. Sister, of course you knowing it, only one thing can heal you, that's God. God's the only one who can heal cancer, and make well, but he can do it, if you can believe. Do you do it, with all your heart? Sister, natuurlijk, jy wat weet, dat net een ding jou kan genees, dis God. God is die enigste een wat kanker kan genees en gezond maak, maar hy kan dit doen as jy kan glo. Doen jy dit met jou hele hart? Kind Heavenly Father, in whom we believe, 
I pray, dear God, that your omnipotent spirit will touch this woman and will make her well. As you have said in your word, these signs shall follow them that believe. Barmhartige Himmelse Vader, en wie ons glo en bid, dierbare God, dat u almachtige gees hierdie vrou sal aanraak, en haar sal gezond maak, soos u in die woord gesê het, vir die wat geglo het, sal hierdie tekens volg. The last thing you said, Jesus, when you left your church, you said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out evil spirits, lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Die laaste ding wat u gesê het, Jesus, toe u die kerk verlaat het, het u gesê, gaan in die hele wereld en verkondig die evangelie. Hy wat glo en gedoop word, sal gered word, en hy wat nie glo nie, sal verloren gaan. En vir die wat geglo het, sal hierdie tekens volg, in my naam, sal hulle bose geest uitdrijf, hulle hande op die siekes le, en hulle sal gezond word. Lord, you are true to your word, and upon the commission of the Lord Jesus, upon his omnipotent word, I now ask that this evil leaves sister in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I go happy, rejoicing, and be made well. Amen. Heere, u is getrouw aan die woord, en volgens die opdracht van Heere Jesus, volgens die almachtige woord, vraag nou dat hier die boosheid sister sal verlaat in Jesus Christus naam. Amen. Ga nou gelukkig verheeg en word gezond gemaakt. Amen. All you, uh, your audience, you'll never wish you could, you may think I'm beside myself, but I'm not. No, sir, I'm not, but I say this in the name of the Lord, that Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, is alive tonight and sure in this auditorium right now, showing the things that his word said that he would do. Isn't he wonderful? Jullie allemaal, jullie gehoor, jullie zal nooit wens, jullie kon, jullie mag denk ik is beter mezelf, maar ik is niet, nee meneer, ik is niet. Maar ik zei hier die in die naam van de Jere dat Jezus Christus die opgewekte zin van God levendig is vanavond en hier en hier in auditorium is net nou om dingen te wijs wat zijn woord gezegd wat hij zou doen. Is hij niet wonderlijk, niet zo wonderlijk? Oh how good. I was looking at a lady, but I believe it's the lady behind her has got a gallbladder trouble sitting back there that would like to be healed. You believe that God would heal you, sister, sitting there right behind the lady, kind of heavy set lady looking at me? Well, do you believe right back behind the lady? Oh, how good. I can have a dame gekyk, but I believe it is the dame behind her, what a gallblaas problem has, what there behind her sits, what graag genees will be. Do you believe that God will heal you, sister? wat daar sit recht achter die dame, soort van een gesette dame, wat na my kyk wel, glo jy recht achter die dame? You sit there praying, wasn't you? Huh? You sit, no, the lady sitting right here, as that, as you could see, if you could only see, how many seen the picture of the angel of the Lord? Your hands right here, or this woman right here? Jy daar gesit en bid, het jy nie, ha ha, jy, nie die dame wat net hier sit, daar is daar die, as jylle kan sien, as jylle net kon sien, hoeveel het die foto van die engel van die Heere gesien? Hier hang dit net hier, boekant hier die vrou net hier. She's suffering with something wrong in the gall, it's in the, right on the side here that causes the trouble. And she was sitting there praying and asking if God would make her well. Sister, you won't have to worry no more. Christ has made you well. Amen. Sê lei aan iets verkeerd nie gal, dis in die reg onder die sy hier, wat die probleem veroorzaak, en sê daar gesit, gebid en gevra, God haar so gezond, maar sister, jy hoef nie meer bekommer te wees, die Christus het jou gezond gemaakt, amen. We thank the Lord, what do you think sister? We're strangers to one another, are we? We don't know each other, Jesus Christ knows us, doesn't he? If God will reveal to me where your trouble is, or something about you, you know I do not know. Will you accept him as your healer? Ons dank die Heere, wat dank jy sister, ons is vreemdelinge vir mekaar is ons. Ons ken nie mekaar nie, Jesus Christus ken ons, ken hy nie. As God aan my sal openbaar wat jou probleem is of iets van jou, wat jy weet wat ek nie weet nie, sal jy hom aanvaar as jou geneeser? I'm your brother, I couldn't hear you. I'm just a man, like your father, husband, brother, and so forth. I'm no healer. But you know, 
that you're standing in his presence or something that you you're, know that there's something near besides man. Isn't that right? Ek jou broer, ek, ek kan jou nie genees nie, ek is net een man soos jy, jou vader of een man, broer, so voort, ek, ek is geen genees hierdie, maar jy weet dat jy in sy teenwoordig is staan, of iets dat jy, jy weet dat daar iets nabe is, behalwe een man, is dit nie recht nie? Now to your friends out there, and to the a witness of the Lord Jesus, that they might know, to so that the audience will be sure, because after this night, there will be many standing judgment. That they might know. Nou aan jylle vriende daar buiten en as getuie van die Heere Jesus, dat hulle mag weet en so dat die gehoor seker sal wees, want na hierdie aand sal daar baie in die oordeel staan sien, dat hulle mag weet. I just want to say something. Just since you have come up here, even now, that there's a real, loving, humble, sweet feeling around you. But you if that's right, raise your hand, and I've never seen you in my life. Ek wil net iets sê, net van dat jy hier opgekom het selfs nou dat daar een baie liefdevol en nederige soet gevoel om jou is, dat jy as dit recht gesteek jou hand op en ek jou nog nooit in my leven gesien het nie. Now to the people who know her, you couldn't stand this close without knowing it, recognizing it. He's here. That's the Holy Spirit. See, the, it has such an effect upon the, the human. It's got to be something... Nou aan die mense wat herken, ek kan nie so nabie staan sonder om dit te weet, dit te herken nie, en hy is hier. Dis die heilige geest in die, dit het so effect op die, die mens, dit moet iets wees. For instance, if you, uh, if you see something through the eye, it'll have an emotional effect to you. And if there's a sense of feeling, and if something affects that feeling, it, it brings the emotion, you see, you, you have to, see, it has to react, and you're in his presence. Bijvoorbeeld, as jy, as jy iets dier die oog sien, sal dit een emotionele effect op jou hee. En as daar zijn tyg van gevoel is, en as iets daar die gevoel affecteer, bring dit, dit emoties jylle sien. Jy, jy moet sien, dit moet reageer, en jy is in sy teenwoordigheid. Now, I, uh, if God will tell me what your trouble is, will you accept him as your healer then for it? Your trouble is the lady's trouble. Female disorder. That's right. Yeah, pain low in the side. Isn't that right? No, ek, as God vir my sal vertel wat jou probleem is, sal jy hom dan as jou geneeser aanvaard daarvoor, jou probleem is een dames probleem, vrouwe kwal, dis recht, jy het pijne laag in die sy, is dit nie recht nie? It's a tube. It's, an, it's infected. You have an abscess on it. And it's causing you trouble. Sometimes it's worse than ever. Dis a buis en dis, on, dis ontsteek. Jy het een abses daarop en dit veroorzaak probleme vir jou. Partijmal is dit erger as ooit. I see it days when you hold yourself and just walk. It's almost putting your teeth together. That's just in reason. Is that right? You don't believe I'm reading your mind, do you, sister? You are a believer. Ek sien jou daar wanneer jy jou self was so en het loop net amper op jou tande buit. Dit was net onlangs uit het recht. Jy glo nie, ek lees jou gedachte nie, glo jy, sister. Jy is een gelovige. Now, Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, the Bible said these things would take place, and you're right now, look. First, the Word, God's Word, said that these things would take place. Nou, Jesus het gesê, vir die wat gegloot, sal hierdie tekens volg, as hulle hulle hande op die siekes lee, sal hulle gezond word. Nou, die Bijbel het gesê, hierdie ding is op plaasmint, en jy is net, nou, kyk, eers die woord, Godse woord het gesê, dat hierdie dinge so plaasmint. Here you walk up to be a stranger, never seen, and as soon as you move up here, you walk in front of man all the time, ministers, but never felt like this in your life, think. Hier het jy na my toe geloop as een vreemdelinge en my nog nooit gesien nie. En so draai jy hier op een weeg het, jy het al voor manne geloop, die heel tyd predikers, maar nog nooit so gevoel in jou leven nie sien. Then here comes something down this lovely person that's here with us now, tells you where your trouble is and what you've been doing. Then you know it's got to be some supernatural hazard. Dan kom iets hier af van hierdie lieflike persoon wat nou hier by ons is, vertel vir jou wat jou probleem is en wat jy gedoen het, dan weet jy dit moet een boonatierlijke wees, nie waar nie. 
then you believe that I am a believer? Then if I lay hands on you and ask for your healing, you'll have to get well, won't it? Then you come forward, if you will. May I just put my hand on yours? And shall we pray as we bow our heads? Dan ek glo dat ek gelovig is, as ek dan hande op jou lê en vra vir jou genesing, sal dit moet gesond word nie waar nie. Kom jy dan voor en toe as jy sal. Mag ek net my hande op jou nou sit, en ons sal bid terwyl ons ons hoofd te buig. Our dear Heavenly Father, knowing that your presence is here and you're omnipotent, you're an arm of presence, and I pray to Jesus, the Son of God, that you will heal our sisters, Ons dierbare Himmelse Vader in die wete dat jy teenwoordig is hier en jy almachtig is, jy is alomteenwoordig, ek bid hier, Jesus die Seen per God, dat jy ons sister sal genees. And she's standing here in your presence now, and you're anointing me. And I ask that you take away the evil from her body. Now we know that it would take her life and send her to a premature grave, but you're here to remove it. En sy staan hier in die teenwoordigheid nou in die salving, en ek vraag dat jy die kwaad uit haar lichaam sal wegneem. Nou ons weet dat dit haar leven sal neem en haar na een voortijdige graf sal stier, maar jy is hier om dit te verweider. And Father, we pray that you will do it, and we know that we have what we ask for, or you are here to witness to us that you are resurrected from the dead. En Vader, ons bid dat jy dit sal doen, ons weet dat ons het waarvoor ons vraag, want jy is hier om te getuig vir ons, dat jy opgestaan het uit die dood. And you know this woman, you've known her since she come on earth, and you're here revealing to her the things that she's done in her life, and what's wrong with her. En ek ken hierdie vrou, jy het haar geken, van dat sy op die aarde gekom het, en jy is hier om aan haar die dinge te openbaar, wat sy in haar leven gedoen het, en wat verkeerd is met haar. And now, upon the, the authority of God's word, I come to challenge the enemy in her body. Thou enemy, call the devil. En nou op die, die gesag van Godse woord, kom ek om die vijand uit te daag na haar lichaam, jou vijand wat die duivel genoem word. I come claiming a gift that was ministered to me by an angel, that Satan you're aware of, and I adjure thee by the living God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that you come out of the woman and don't torment her anymore. Amen. Ek kom met de gave wat aan my gegee is dier die engel, daarvan, Satan, is jy bewus. En ek beveel jou dier die levende God, Jesus Christus, die Seen per God, dat jy uit die vrou uitkom, en haar nie meer teister nie. Amen. God bless you, sister. You go believing with all your heart, you'll get well. Write me your testimony, tell me what happened up here when you come. God sê nou, sister, ga nie glo met jou hele hart, jy sal gezond word. Skryf vir my jou getuie en sê vir my wat haar boe gebeur het, toe hy gekom het. God be with your heart trouble, sir. Be well. Go off the platform and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing me. You'll get well. Amen. Lean now with all your heart. Wil jy graag oor daar haar probleem kom, meneer, gezond wees, gaan van die platform af, sê, dank jy, Heere Jesus, vir my geneesing, en hy sal gezond word. Amen. Glo nou met jou jylle hart. I want to ask you something. When I said heart trouble to him, Something happened to you, wasn't it? Because that's what you had to. And when you were standing down there in the audience a few minutes ago, you said, yes, I believe. And since that very time, there's been a difference in your head. That's right. Ek wil jou iets vraag. Toe ek hard probleem gesê het vir hom, het iets met jou gebeur, het het nie. Want dis wat jy ook gehad het. Toe jy daar onder in die gehoor gestaan het, een paar meter geleer het, ek gesê, ja, ek glo. En van daar is self de tyd af, was daar een verskil nie, jou nie waar nie. Dis recht. Bo- Right, exactly. I know, but when you heard me say that to that man, what I said, then something you felt wonderful, didn't you? Now that's what comes to you to bring your healing. Do you believe it with all your heart? Come on, Mr. Maar, jy sien, dis recht, precies. Ek weet, maar toe jy my dit oor sê het vir die daarie man, wat ek gesê het, toe het iets, jy het wonderlik gevoel het nie nie, Nou, dis wat na jou toe gekom het om jou geneesing te bring. Glo jy met jou hele hart? Kom, my sister. Kind Heavenly Father, I pray that in Jesus' name that you'll make manifest your love for this woman and will heal her and make her completely whole as I lay hands on her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
Maar een martige hemelse vader, ek bid in Jesus naam, dat u die liefde aan hierdie vrou sal manifesteer, en haar sal genees, en haar volkome sal gezond maak, soos ek hande op haar le, in Jesus Christus naam, Amen. Now I wonder out here how many believe now with all your heart. Do you believe? Raise your hand. Is there a person in here that's not a Christian before we pray for any more sick? That say, I now accept Jesus as my Savior. I've been a little afraid in my life. Nou, ek wonder daar buite hoeveel nou glo met jylle jylle hart. Glo jylle, steek jou hand op. Is daar een persoon hier binnen wat nie Christen is nie? Voor ons vir nog enige siekes bid, wat sê, ek aanvaar Jesus nou, as my verlosser, ek was een bykie bang in my leven. God bless you, young man, sitting up there. God bless you, lady, standing with the baby. But someone else, raise your hand, say, I now accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. God bless you, sister. God sien jou, jong man, wat daar boos sit. God sien jou, dame, wat met die babetjie sit. Sal iemand anders jou hand opsteek, sê, ek aanvaar nou Jesus Christus my verlosser. God sien jou, sister. You remember, you'll never probably till you get to heaven be any more in his presence than you are right here watching him moving with the people. En hou, jylle sal waarschijnlijk nooit tot jylle in die hemel kom, enigszins meer in sy tenwoordigheid wees, as wat jylle net nou is, om sien beweeg saam met die mense nie. Would someone else, shall we bow our heads just a moment? Heavenly Father, you want people to believe on you, you want people to love you. Four or five has raised your hands that they want to accept you as their personal Savior. I pray, Father, that you will deal just now. So iemand anders, terwijl ons net nou ons hoofde oomblik by Gemelse Vader, jy wil hee, mense moet nie glo, jy wil hee, mense moet jy lief hee. Vier of vijf het hulle hande opgesteek, dat hulle jy wil aanvaar as hulle persoonlijke saligmaker. Ek bid, Vader, dat jy net nou sal weer. And let men and women who have never yet come to you, and maybe got away from you, and away from church, and away from worship, and they want to come back to you, and they know that you're here, and they've they know that it's you that's speaking to them just now. En laat mans en vrou wat nog nooit na u toe gekom het nie, of miskien weggegaan het van u af, en weg van die kerk af, en weg van aanbidding af, en hulle wil terugkom na u toe, en hulle weet dat u hier is, en hulle, hulle weet dat dit u is wat nou met hulle praat. I pray that they'll humbly raise their hands to you, knowing that someday they've got to meet you. Ek bid dat hulle hulle hande nederig na u toe sal oplig, in die wete, dat hulle u eendag sal moet ontmoet. And maybe before this year is out, or maybe before this week is finished, they may come just to meet you, and they want to come in peace, knowing that their sins are forgiven. En miskien voor hierdie jaar verby is, en miskien voor hierdie week verby is, hulle mag kom om, om u te ontmoet, en hulle wil in vrede kom, en die wete dat hulle sondes vergewe is. And Father, I give them by your word the promise that you said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall never come to condemnation, but pass from death unto life. And Father, I give for all the words that you have that you have said, He that my words have heard and glowed on what I have said, and has ever lived, and shall never come to your word, but has gone out of the death into the life. While we have our heads bowed, and the music is playing, I wonder, Christian friends, our sinner friends, is there another one in here, not to me, your brother, but to knowing that the Lord Jesus is near? Would you raise your hand with your head bow? No one, look, please. Terwijl ons ons hoofde gebeig het in die muziek speel, wonder ek, Christen vriend, of sonder vriend, is daar nog een hier binnen? Nie vir my, jou broer nie, maar om te weet dat die Heere Jesus nabe is, sal jou hand opsteek met jylle hoofde gebeig, niemand wat kyk nie asjeblief. Just raise, just raise your hand to God and say, by this hand up, I now want to accept Jesus as my Savior. While he's this close to me, I want to accept him as my Savior. Would you raise your hand? Steek net, steek net, nou jou hand op na God en sê, met hier die hand op wil ek nou Jesus as my verlosser aanvaar, terwyl hy so nabie aan my is, wil ek om aanvaar as my verlosser. Sal jou hande op te steek? God bless you, you, you down there young lady, you little boy, you lady, you, that's good, God bless you. The Lord Jesus be merciful to you, everyone. God sien jou, jou, jou daar onder, jong dame, jou, jou kleen sienkie, jou dame en jou, dis goed, God sien jylle en die Heere Jesus, wees jylle elkeen genadig. Is there some here that used to go to church and take part in some church somewhere, and you just got away from church, you don't go to church anymore? I don't care what church it is, that doesn't matter. 
is daar sommige hier wat altijd kerk toe gegaan het en deel geneem het aan een of ander kerk iwers, en jy het uh, net weggekom van die kerk en jy ga nie meer kerk toe nie, ek gee nie om wat er kerk dit is nie, dit maak nie saak nie. But you want to go back to your church and take up your fellowship again with the children of God, and you want to be remembered in prayer that God will let you go back. Raise your hand, will you do it? God bless you. Oh my, there are a dozen hands, I guess, up now. That's wonderful. Do that, will you? Maar jylle wil terug gaan na jylle kerk toe en weer jylle gemeenskap ervat met die kinders van God. En jylle wil onhou word en gebed dat God jylle sal laat terug gaan steek. Jou hand op sal jy dit doen, God sien jylle oog goeste, daar sit dus sy hande op rekening ek. Nou, dis dit wonderlik. Doen dit sal jylle? Our brother pastor will call you up to the altar after a bit to brother Junior Jackson for this uh, altar call just in a few moments. Ons broer pastoor sal jy oproep na die altaar toe, na het teikje die broer Junior Jackson, vir jy die altaar oproep, net binnen een paar oomblikke. But I want to ask you a question, are you believing now that the Lord Jesus is here, and you would like to be healed? Will you raise your hand? Just raise your hand that you want to be healed. God bless you. God bless you. Maar ek wil vir jylle vraag vraag, gloe jylle nou dat die Heere Jesus hier is, en jylle wil graag genees word, sal jylle jou hand opsteek, steek net jou hand op, dat jy genees wil word. God sien jou, God sien jou. I put your head down. I see a lady sitting right here, just a moment. Yes, she has a female disorder sitting right out here with her hand up towards her head. God bless you, sister. Your hand went up a few minutes ago. You don't have to worry no more. God heals you. Your faith. Nou met jylle hoofde gebuig, ek sien a dame net hier sit net oomblik. Ja, sê het, a vrou probleem. Sit net haar buiten met haar hand op langs haar kop. God sien jou, sister, Jou hand het een paar minuten gelede opgegaan, jy hoef nie meer bekommer te wees nie, God, hy genees jou, jou geloof. Brother, you're sitting back here looking towards me with a shaking, with kind of a palsy, you have a prostate trouble, you have to get up at night, don't you? All right, yes sir. And now, that's, uh, you believe that Jesus Christ makes you well? If you do, all right, then you can have your healing, God bless you. That's fine, now be real reverent, everyone. Broer, hy sit daar achter, en hy toen na my gekyk met de beveratie, met een soort verlamming, jy het een prostraat probleem, jy moet opstaan in die nacht nie waar nie, dis recht, ja meneer, en nou daar, gloe jy dat Jesus Christus jou gezond maak, as jy glo goed, dan sal jy jou geneesing kry, God sê nou, dis goed, wees nou baie eerbiedig allemaal. Up in the balcony here over on my right, someone over there, say Lord God, I believe you with all my heart, I want to be remembered in a word of prayer, just now, would you raise your hand, no matter where you're from, God bless you son, God bless you sister, Boon die balkon hier aan my rechterkant, sê iemand daar oorkant, Heere God, ek glo met my heel hart, ek wil onthou word in een woord van gebed net nou. Sal jy jou hand opsteek, maak nie saak waar jy vandaan kom nie, God sien jou sien, God sien jou sister, God sien jou, God sien jou. I see a water explode, it's a missionary sitting here praying to, may the Lord God bless you, my sister, and give you the desire of your heart also, the Lord be with you. Ek sien waters vloei, dis een sendeling wat ook hier sit en bid. Mag die Heere God jou sien, my sister, en vir jou ook die begeerte van jou hart gee, die Heere wees met jou. Sê, hoe weet jy dit, Brother Branham? Ek moet het sê, hier is dit, die engel van die Heere is teenwoordig. Nou, you, I'm going to ask you to do something. You that's sitting next to somebody to you, Word sick, would you lay your hands over on them in just a moment for a word of prayer? Do jylle, ek gaan jylle vraag om iets te doen, jylle wat langs iemand sit wat siek is, sal jylle hande oor kan op hulle leen het een oomblik vir a woord van gebed? Lay your hands over on each other for a word of prayer? That's right. God will hear your prayer too. He loves you. He's here and he wants to make you well. Lê jylle hande oor kan op mekaar verhoor, van gebed is recht, God sal jylle gebed ook verhoor. Hy het jylle lief, hy is hier, en hy wil jylle gesort maak. Our Heavenly Father, I bring this audience to you just now, that knowing that you're here, never failed on a one, you never failed on. You're God and you can't fail. Ons Hemelse Vader, ek bring hierdie gehoor na u toe net nou, en die wete dat die hier is, nooit met een geval het nie. Jy val nooit nie, Heere, jy is God, en jy kan nie val nie. And your attitude towards this 10 or 15 people that come across the platform tonight, is your attitude towards each and every one. 
En die gesint het teen oor die 10 of 15 mense wat oor die platform gekom het vanavond, is die gesint het teen oor ieder en elk. Several out in the audience, maybe eight or ten out in the audience there, that you have showed visions over, tell them what their diseases was and what they were. Why, you the Lord Jesus. You know all of them. And you can reveal to your humble servants that which is necessary. Verskeer jy daar buiten nie gehoor, miskien 8 of 10 buiten nie gehoor daar oor wie jy visioene gewees het. Hulle vertel het wat hulle siektes was en wat hulle was, wel jy is die Heere Jesus, jy ken hulle allemaal. En jy kan openbaar aan jy nederige dienstknechte, dis wat nodig is. And I pray, Heavenly Father, just now, that you see them as they are now, and I pray that on your great heart, which I know is far beyond what human compassion would be, but you'll look at them and see their need and heal every one. En ek bid, Hemelse Vader, net nou dat jy hulle sien soos hulle nou is, en ek bid dat op jy groot hart, wat ek weet ver boe kan menselike medeleie so wees, maar dat jy na hulle sal kyk, en hulle behoef te sien, en elkeen genees. Lord, you know their conditions, and I pray to Jesus' name, that right now, that you will heal them. Jere, ek ken hulle toestande, en ek bid, Jere, Jesus' naam, dat net nou, dat jy hulle sal genees. And the enemy, the devil, has bound them, and the unbelief has bound them to circumstances. You, I adjure the enemy of Jesus Christ, that you come out of the people and lead them through Jesus Christ's name. En die vijand, die duivel wat hulle gebind het, en die ongeloof wat hulle gebind het, aan omstandig, jy, ek beveel jou vijand van Jesus Christus, dat jy die mense uitkom, en verlaat hulle die Jesus Christus nou. Now with your heads bowed, believing with all your heart, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here, and making you well, that you're sitting in his presence, and you believe. Nou met jylle hoofde gebeig, en glo met jou hele hart, dat Jesus Christus die Seen van God hier is, en jou gezond maak, dat jy in sy tenwoordigheid sit en jy glo. As you believe with all your heart, and believe that you can accept your healing, with your head bowed, raise your hand, if you feel you can accept your healing, that you're healed. En as jylle met jylle hele hart glo, en glo dat jy jou geneesing kan aanvaar, met jou hoofd gebeig, steek jou hand op, as jy voel jy kan jou geneesing aanvaar, dat jy genees is. God bless you. That's wonderful. The entire audience and every one of you that raised your hand is now accepting their healing. God sien het is wonderlijk. Die hele gehoor en elke geluk wat hulle hand opgesteek en dan vaar nou hulle geneesing. The Lord bless you. While we bow our heads again for a word of prayer from Brother Junior Jackson with your head bowed. All right, Brother Jackson, Lord. Our Father, we thank thee for the one. Die Heere sien jylle, terwijl ons weer ons hoofde buig vir een woord van gebed, Van Broer Junior Jackson met sy hoofd gebeig goed, Broer Jackson die Heere, 